Stadium in East Lansing ahead of kickoff between Northwestern and Michigan State. The big news for Michigan State this week, three quarterbacks on the depth chart listed as an or. Who will be the starter with the answer? Lisa Byington stands by with head coach Mark D'Antonio. Well, Mark D'Antonio, you've had a week to decide who will you start at quarterback today. Uh, we're going to go with Brian LeWork, our redshirt freshman, number 14. Why is that? Well, I just think we need to have some production, a little bit more production as we go. And uh, all these, all three guys have had a good week of practices, but uh, I think we need to go in that direction. He barely has experience. He played the final play, or the final series, I should say, against Wisconsin. What gives you the confidence that he can handle this stage today? Well, we've seen him for a year and a half, and that's why you come to Michigan State. You don't come to sit on the sidelines, so it's time. Thank you. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. And alongside Matt Millen, I'm Kevin Kugler. And a bit of a surprise for Spartan fans, a bit of a surprise for all of us. Brian Lewerke gets his first career start today. So let me say this. Once you start in this direction, I don't think you can go back. So I think now you can have the guys who are competing all week long to be able to want to say he's the backup. But Lewerke's just a freshman. Once you throw him in there, you got to ride that horse. And it's a critical game for Michigan State and for Northwestern. Spartans have lost three straight. Northwestern coming off that win. But both two and three, this is a huge game. It's a monster game. Let me tell you something. In every season, you look at your schedule and say there's some games you're going to be favored in, some games you're not going to be favored in. But then there are the other games that are the flips. And those are the games that define your season. This is one of those games. Well, one good note for Michigan State is that they get some big-time help back at linebacker. Riley Bulla returns. Don't underestimate the return of Riley Bulla. Riley Bulla is an emotional leader, but more importantly, he's the guy who gets everybody on the same page. They have been missing that kind of leadership on this defense. They'll get it back today. That's a big plus for Michigan State. A couple of big playmakers for Northwestern. Austin Carr, Justin Jackson, both guys who are off to really good starts this yeah, year. Yeah, and so the big thing will be to let's justify what that offensive line can do, and that's Justin Jackson. They've got to get Justin Jackson going and when you're ready for a third down or a big play they've been turned into Austin Carr all season long he's a guy who can make that play he's delivered and they'll need him today if they're going to have any offensive success that Fitzgerald the head man of Northwestern Clayton Thorson will be his starter for sure no question there and with us in studio our starter back as well Mike Pereira our rules analyst with us in our studios if there are any questions that come up Mike will have answers for them and for us as we get this one started here in East Lansing. It'll be Michigan State with the football to start this first quarter and Brian Lewerke, who in the spring, Mark D'Antonio said he reminds him a little bit of a young Kirk Cousins. I don't know that you expect Kirk Cousins like production early. But you certainly get the temperament, according to Mark D'Antonio, of a young Kirk Cousins. Very interesting decision that's to go as a freshman. Yeah, I, that surprised me, Kevin. But they have their reasons, and they're, they're happy with it. So, ready or not, here we come. R.J. Shelton back deep, and the kickoff will go through the end zone, and the touchback will bring young Brian Lewerke onto the field. His first career start, you see his teammates coming up, giving him a little pat, a little encouragement as he makes his way out. This redshirt freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, was a 19-5 record as a starter at Pinnacle High School. It's a little step up from Pinnacle High School. Yeah, and you want to know who's going to be his biggest advocate today? It's going to be Tyler O'Connor. And he'll also be that guy on the sideline to direct him through a lot of reads and understanding the offense and the personnel on the field. So Tyler O'Connor becomes a big piece of the puzzle today. Benny McGowan at center, Brian Allen at right guard with Gerald Holmes in the backfield. We'll outline a lot of different lineup changes today for Michigan State. Here's Holmes on first down. And Holmes struggling forward for three to the 28-yard line. The run game, Matt, is going to be really critical for both these teams. Michigan State struggled the last two times in this stadium, 160 yards rushing combined. Let me just say this right off the start. The team whose offensive line performs the best wins this game. It's just going to be that simple. Whistle was blown before that ball popped out. We're working on the run, trying to get to the edge, and he's chased down by Jalen Prater. At the 27, it'll be a loss of one. Third down and eight. So you're already in a tough third down. Your first third down as a starter. And this is where this Michigan State offensive line's got to be able to protect. He's going to be a pocket guy, especially initially. It's going to be simple routes, things that he can complete. But you have to be able to get to the sticks. 
Seventh in the Big Ten at 39% on third down this year. Price the tight end in motion. On third down and eight. Lewerke to the air, looking deep for Shelton. He's got him! And a first down at the Northwestern 40. It would be UK there, but what a throw. Yeah, perfectly thrown ball. And he put, that, put a lot of air under it and allowed him to run underneath it. But he saw the coverage and he saw he had one-on-one -on -one and he saw that he had Shelton on top of coverage. That's really well thrown. That's a huge play and a huge confidence boost. 33 yards through the air and on first down, Gerald Holmes trying to find some running room. And Holmes gets a yard to the 39-yard line. Anthony Walker Jr. in the mix for Northwestern. about a yard. Our auto owners insurance impact players for this one, Matt. Well, LJ Scott is going to have to have himself a big game, take a little bit of pressure off of Lewerke. But Anthony Walker on the defensive side and Ithadi Adenabo, both those guys have to play well. Adenabo with the pass rush. Walker, he's been their leader on defense. He's got to be able to clean up all the mess on the inside. They're going to have to rely on their run game, Michigan State offensively, especially early to let Lewerke to be able to kind of settle into this game. Yeah, whether that's Scott, Holmes, London, whoever's running that running back spot on third and seven. Four-man pressure. Lewerke over the middle, and it's incomplete. He wanted Shelton. Couldn't find him. Cairo on the coverage, and it's fourth down. Yeah, but I like that. I like that he managed the pocket well, and he stepped up in the pocket. And the Denebo on the outside got nice pressure, and he forced him to have to use the pocket, but he was comfortable with it. Jake Hartberger will come on and punt it away, but not an unsuccessful drive no. for Lewerke. You flipped the field here. Yes, you did. And, and you flipped the field on the strength of your arm, which was a big deal. Flynn Nagel back deep for Northwestern. Kill this one inside the 10. And it'll be dropped down at the one yard line. What a special teams play by TJ Harrell. Keep in mind, in college football, it's where the ball is, not where the player is. And Harold just played that absolutely perfectly. His body can go past that end zone, but the ball cannot. He's aware of it, drops it right there, and that is a huge big-time play. One more look at it. This is akin to being a punt returner. You have to have that skill and awareness at the same time. That is really well done by Harold. And again, it's the ball, not, not the body. Yeah. So buried in their own end on first down at the one. Clayton Thorson, the give to Justin Jackson and a little breathing room out to the four. Malik McDowell with the tackle. Clayton Thorson coming off a fine game two weeks ago. Look at the numbers, 164 passing yards, four total touchdowns, three through the air, one on the ground. Yeah. And, not, and no picks. And so that's, he has to match that effort here today. On second down, Jackson again, and Jackson not finding much room there as he's dropped at the five by Andrew Dowell. Now just now this two two plays and I can see the difference Riley Bull is making already he's the general out there he's the guy getting everybody lined up getting him in the right situations and positions they have missed his leadership on the field another change for the Spartans today a couple of them actually Justin Lane freshman starting at corner and Malik McDowell now on the end not in the middle of that line third and six at the five in some trouble, Bullock providing the late heat, and he throws it away. And a three and out pitched by the Spartan defense after the special teams play pins Northwestern at the one. Michigan State knows they have to start fast. 
and then they have to be able to finish what they start. That's what they haven't been doing at all here in this early season. Hunter Nice wander to punt with Brandon Sowards awaiting the kick. Bad punt. Fair catch called for by the upback R.J. Shelton, and he makes it inside the 40-yard line of Northwestern. Brian Lewerke is going to have excellent field position after the 34-yard punt. 11-14 remaining in a scoreless first. Second series for the new starter next. Scoreless ball game early between Northwestern and Michigan State. Kevin Kugler, Matt Millen, Lisa Byington back with you in East Lansing. Brian Lewerke, the surprise starter today as Tyler O'Connor and Damian Terry with Lewerke in a battle all week long. Lewerke gets the nod. Play action on first down. Good protection. Now he's going to run. Lewerke with some running room. In the speed to get the edge. Lewerke down the sideline. And he's out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Anthony Walker Jr. chasing him out to mark him at the 15, a 24-yard pickup on the scramble by Lewerke. But it's the what, what he did to get to that scramble. He knew he had a shot down the middle of the field, and he pumped it, and then pulled it, and then used his eyes to be able to get to the edge. That's, that's a little bit beyond your freshman play. On first down and 10 at the 15. Holmes and line in the eye. Holmes the carry. Met in the hole by Walker. Bounces off two tackles. Bounces off a third and gets back to the 16-yard line where he loses a yard. It could have been a lot worse. C.J. Robbins finally finished him off, but boy, was there penetration there, Matt. And it was a couple of nice smacks. And one of the guys who ran a good one right in the middle of that was Anthony Walker. So Anthony Walker, I've watched. I think he's a better player this year. Ironically, you look at his tackles and say he's not always oh, not playing as well, but I would disagree. He's bigger. He believes what's going on in front of him now. A year ago, he didn't do that. I think he's a better player now than he was a year ago. Second down and 11. Lewerke floating in for the end zone. His tight end is there. Pace with the touchdown. than any Big Ten tight end in the last 20 years. Kevin, the whole key to that thing, the work yet nice throw, but that protection, whoever wins the line of scrimmage wins this game. Michigan State won the line of scrimmage on that series. Michael Geiger will try to finish it off with the extra point. Seven-nothing Michigan State as Brian Lewerke delivers his first career touchdown pass. Emphasis on the word touch as he drops it over the shoulder to Josiah Price. Brian Lewerke fired up, and the senior captain who lost his starting job today, he's happy as well. Keep a note on this because our Cooper Tire scoring drive will be the answer to a trivia question. The first scoring drive in the career of Brian Lewerke, three plays, 39 yards, took 121 off the clock and a 7-0 lead for Michigan State. And the long pass on the first possession, Matt, flipped the field and allowed them to have the short field after their defense got the stop on Northwestern's first possession. And, and what I really... Yeah, it's two series, but what you really like is decision-making and being decisive with that decision. A short kick that'll go out of bounds yeah. at Northwestern is going to have good field position for their second possession. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line on the right hash. 
First down. So from the one to the 35 as we go back to the touchdown. Yeah, there's three elements. First is going to be the protection. That is outstanding. The second is Josiah Price. He sees the coverage, and he's going to have leverage, which means that the defender's on the outside, which gives him the inside field to play with. And the last one, most importantly, watch the decisiveness. Once, once Price makes the move, he doesn't hesitate. Ball comes right out of his hands. That's the difference of what you've seen from previous quarterbacks to the rookie. On first down, quick toss to Jackson. Jackson breaks the tackle. And Justin Jackson, Jackson makes something out of what appeared to be nothing. Thorson had to get rid of that quickly because Fry jumped the snap count, was right on his heel as he threw it. Thorson felt it and was able to make the play. And that's one of the things this Northwestern offense wants to be able to do is get Justin Jackson out in space. He's quicker than fast, he'll make you miss. Quick toss to Vault, Solomon Vault, a little spin, and Vault's gonna be a yard short of the first down. Let's check out today's Auto Owners Insurance Impact players. Well, we just talked about Justin Jackson. They need to get the ball in his hands. Chris Fry, I think, has played as well as anybody on this Michigan State defense. In fact, he has played better. And Malik McDowell, it's time for him to turn on his game. They moved him to the outside. I think it's a better position for him. He can use his pass rush skills better. And he still has good power. It's Austin Carr in motion on third down and short. And a flag is down, and instead of third and one, looks like it's going to be third and six. Ball start. Offense number nine. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's Garrett Dickerson, the superback, who moved early. He's playing pretty well. Yeah, number nine. They used him as a tight end. You can see him on the bottom right down there. He flinched. Lee McDowell kind of reacted to it. They're going to call that every time. Dickerson's been playing pretty good this year. I, I like what he's done. Don't like that, however. On third down, Dickerson, the motion man. Thorson to the air. Intercepted. And that one's going all the way to the house. The freshman, Justin Lane, with a touchdown. So, you want to pick on the freshman, do you? They forgot that Justin Lane does as good a job of it. on this one. He anticipates his throw perfectly, Kevin, and it's the difference in the play. What a start for Michigan State. And the two youngsters leading the way. The redshirt freshman, Lewerke, and the true freshman, Justin Lane. We talked with Harlan Barnett, the defensive coordinator, yesterday, and I said, tell me about this Justin Lane. He said, he's like a baby Trey Waynes. Showing some moves right here. Yeah. Inside, outside, high. Your job is to hold the outside. If the ball comes your way, you take it to the house. And he did just that. Michigan State's youth movement paying off very early here in East Lansing as Justin Lane takes that one back for the touchdown off the interception of Clayton Thorson, the fifth pick thrown by Thorson this year. You've got Brian Lewerke, the redshirt freshman, navigating down the field and throwing his first touchdown pass. And then Justin Lane with a pick six, Michigan State's first defensive touchdown of the year as Flynn Nagel will take a knee for the touchback. Let's go back to that interception by Lane. Yeah, let's go back. This is a little bit of a trap zone. And what they're trying to do is it's all on discipline. You're going to have the outside. You're going to have the inside. You have deep help. What the, uh, the thought is, is you let the offense come to you. You have to have discipline in the scheme. Well, Justin Lane did it absolutely perfectly. Let it develop in front of you, and then you see the quarterback making the throw. His read was perfect. He took it back. He did exactly what his eyes told him to do, and good discipline by the freshman. He played corner against BYU. He played wide receiver against Indiana earlier in the year. Now starting at corner today. And on first down, Justin Jackson with the carry, and Jackson upended at the 28 by Andrew Dowell. Let's talk Northwestern for a minute. What do they have to do? Blitz early here down 14-0. Right, so now you got to just get back and get into, okay, what is our game plan? Our game plan, we've got to run the football. We have to establish first downs. Big plays don't matter at this point. Pocket holds for Thorson, and he throws that one short and incomplete, looking for Skoranek. There's a flag down on the near sideline, Matt, near the 35-yard line. 
Rare call. You don't really see that call very often. They're going to move him back, I believe. He knows the receiver downfield. I number 90. I to cover the tight end. That penalty is declined. Yeah. Third That's, down. Yep. Put him in third long situations is what they haven't done well. Let's take a good look at the... Uh, I don't see it either. They may have said uncovered. I, don't, I didn't hear the whole thing. Regardless, it's third down. They declined it. No harm, no foul. Four-man rush over the middle. Open is falls, and he drops the football. Is it a catch and a fumble? That's what the ruling is. It'll belong to Michigan State. Demetrius Cox hit him and jarred it loose. Did Vault ever secure it and make a move to be a fumble? The ruling on the field was a completed pass, followed by a fumble, recovered by Michigan State, first down. Andrew Dowell recovers it after Demetrius Cox knocks it out. There's the catch. There's the tuck. Make a move. One. The ruling of fumble recovered is under further review. So there's an element of time here. It's kind of a bang-bang play. So there's an element of time that gets introduced. So you look at it right there. And did he have control? That one you'd say, eh, not so sure. However, they did call it a catch and a fumble on the field. And if they, it's inconclusive, it'll go to the field call. And the little monitor brought out for our referee, John O'Neill, to take a look at. You know, when we play these things in slow motion, you go, oh, yeah, well, he had it. He had it for a long time. But this is, keep in mind, real-time bang-bang. So he gets his feet to the ground, and he's hit, ball pops out. There's the real-time. Mike Pereira is watching this with us from our studios. And, Mike, what do you see here? This one's right on the border, isn't it? I mean, to me, it's one of these. And Matt's right. You got to look at these in real time. And you got to look at it the way the officials look at it, you know, at that speed. And so, to me, it's an incomplete pass. And another indicator, by the way, is you see in the replay monitor, they're writing down a bunch of information, which would indicate that they're going to reverse the call and have to reset the clock and, and reset yardage. But to me, you have to look at these. You can make anything in slow motion look like a catch, but looking at it in real speed, I certainly like it as an incomplete bang, bang catch. Bang, bang, incomplete pass. Mike, that's a good job of reading your keys, just like I taught you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, years ago, I worked with Mike, and when I was an official for a game, and uh, I had a blast with him. I had a blast with him, and he's, he's the best there is out there, not even close. Now, were you the best out there? I was awful. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike had a hard time trying to get me. I would look at a play and I'd be like, oh, that's a penalty. And he'd say, well, throw your flag. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> there were only offensive penalties called by Matt yeah, Millen that Yeah, that's all day. it was. I mean, really. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. As a result, it'll be fourth and seven. Ball will be placed at the 28-yard line. The clock will start on the snap. Please adjust the game clock to eight minutes, two seconds. All right, I'm adding that to my repertoire now, so make sure whenever you see those officials writing down notes, there's a good indicator. And, you know, that's a, that's a very interesting point. I'm glad you brought that up, that Mike Pereira brought up. That's sort of the, the inside football kind of thing that you don't think about, but when you watch those refs writing it down, there you go. Helps out when we try to guess along with them. <laughs> Brandon Sowers awaiting the punt from Hunter Nicewander. And a short punt. But takes a nice Northwestern bounce. What a roll! And that will die all the way at the 10-yard line. That got 25 yards of roll. It's almost a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at today's Red Lobster keys to the game. Now, we've said it early. We'll say it again. Whoever controls the lines of scrimmage is going to win this game. And so far, it's an early game. You know, you're halfway through the first period, but Michigan State so far has demonstrated that they've come to dominate the lines of scrimmage. Michigan State with their worst start of the day at their own 10-yard line after the 62-yard punt. L.J. Scott in now at running back. 
first carry of the day for Scott. And Scott finds yardage to the 12, a pickup of two. Trying to work the inside of that run game, and it's not easy. There's a couple of changes that have gone on down there. Allen, 65, was the center. They moved him now to right guard. McGowan was the guard. He goes to center. All that is to help 70 Higby in there. Mr. Higby's just a freshman. And so you want to have a you want to have experience next to the guy because the center's the guy who controls that line of scrimmage. Lewerke on the keep. And Lewerke down to the 17-yard line as we go down to Lisa Vinton for more on Brian Lewerke. Yeah, Kevin, in talking to some of the Michigan State coaches in the pregame, they said what came down to this decision was who would give us a jump start? Who's going to look different? And I can tell you, even before these couple of scores from Michigan State, there was a true energy and a buzz around Brian Lewerke. His teammates were pounding on his shoulder pads before he took the field for the first time. Add that plus this touchdown, a couple of touchdowns, there is a major buzz back here on this Michigan State side. Well, that's not surprising. He has provided a little bit of a spark early here. i tell you one thing he has right away that the others did is the ability to move with his feet. He'll do it again here on the run, and he threw it behind Donnie Corley. And he knew he had Corley. Threw it behind him, but look, it's easy to see. Now, just only a few series. The work he brings them, the ability to be able to run. He knew he had him. He knew he had him. Throw on the run is a big deal. Ability to pick up first downs, big deal. Second down, he takes off and picks up five yards. All that is a big check in the plus column for Lewerke. Jake Hartbarger to punt it away. His first punt, 36 yards. That was a punt he pinned at Northwestern at the one-yard line. He could unleash this one. It's off a good one. Nagel at the 39 does not call fair catch, and he pays the price. No return after the 44-yard punt. Kari Willis on the stop. Justin Jackson getting a little breather on this drive as John Moten, the fourth, the freshman running back, comes in. And Moten with the carry on first down. Malik McDowell pouncing on him at the 41-yard line, a pickup of two. So when you start talking about skill sets of defensive linemen, Malik McDowell could be at the top of the, up top of the list. Now they've moved him from the inside to the outside. He's been lining up on both ends. He has all the physical tools you need. Looks like he hurt his elbow or something. Timeout taken by Michigan Charge State. Timeout. 549 Michigan remaining State, in the first. Spartans up by two touchdowns. A full media timeout. Malik McDowell was kind of shaking out that arm as he walked off the field during the timeout. Seems to be okay. Now lining up on the other side. So they, they're moving around this defensive line to get different looks here. Second down and eight. Thorson, quick toss. The catch by Austin Carr and a first down. First catch of the day for Austin Carr. His 33rd catch of the year. Kevin, at the top of the show, we said whenever they need a play, Big play, first down, where they go to Austin Carr. You've got to identify where Austin Carr is first in this offense. You have to be aware of him. Vault was the motion man. Here's Justin Jackson. That ball stuck up high as he carried it up near his shoulder pad at the 45-yard line down after the three-yard gain. That first first down is the hardest one to get. And they need to just settle themselves in. This is exactly what they need to do. Down 14, just go down, get first downs, don't get a touchdown. McDowell on the rush, good toss and a better catch by Flynn Nagel at the 39-yard line. He's a yard short of the first down with Vionte Copeland on the coverage. That's it. It's a third and one right now Stick. with Northwestern trying to get a little momentum here. Yeah, and this is a huge first down play right now. It's only five minutes left in the first quarter, but they've got to get some of that momentum back on their side. This is the play for it. Already 0 for 3 today on third. Jackson with the carry and the first down. The power by Justin Jackson to get to the 36 with Monte Nicholson on his back. Nicholson's been having an excellent year. Riley Bullen was the first guy there to, to give him the good stick, but this is a this is a good running back. Yeah, you know, you'd want him to be a little faster. He's quicker than fast, but he's instinctive. And movement on the right side of the offensive line. 
offense number 76. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, you saw Fitz's reaction on the sidelines for Northwestern. He knows how just a five-yard penalty can change everything you want to do on a drive. Well, it all drives coaches crazy, especially a guy like Fitzgerald who's, you know, don't beat yourself. That's the number one rule. Don't beat yourself. Penalties do that. First and 15. Jackson. Gets the edge against Bullock. What a high step, and he's driven down at the 35-yard line. Cox was there first. Nicholson finished him off. Kevin, did you see? And then Riley Bullock came clean. And and he just, just Justin Jackson just gives him a little okey doke right in the middle of that run. It just kind of stop start real quick, and it just screws up Bullock, and he picks up the extra yardage. On second and nine. Thorson with Fry right on him. Gets it to the sideline and Carr with a catch and out of bounds at the 29. That's a heck of a throw right there by Thorson. Man, he is under pressure going the opposite way. You got Fry bearing down. He knows he's going to get hit and he's got to be accurate with the ball. And he was. Again, here's that third down situation. Third down and three this time. Keep an eye on Austin Carr. He leads the Big Ten in third down yardage. He's in the slot up top, but instead it's Jackson who gets the carry. Oh, what a move! He showed him a leg, he took it away, and he took it for six. Quicker than fast. That's what it is. Yante Copeland had a clear shot. Make the play. Tackling in space is what this Northwestern offense wants to do with Justin Jackson. Here's why. And he'll break your ankles there. He did right there. And Copeland just, Copeland, right, they just picked up his jock strap. He took it back to the sideline. He stuck that left leg out there and went, no, 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 you can't have that leg. <laughs> Goodbye. What a move by Justin Jackson. He's a terrific running back. Great short area quickness. I mean, and that's an example of what that is. 81% of the yards on the ground this year have come from Justin Jackson. You can understand why. Keep feeding him the ball. Extra point is good, and Northwestern's cut the lead in half as Jack Mitchell puts the extra point through, and Justin Jackson had 171 yards against Iowa. Excellent start here as he gets into the end zone for the Wildcats, and a little fired up as the Cats are right back in it. Michigan State 14, Northwestern 7, 332 remaining in this first quarter after a 29-yard touchdown by Justin Jackson and Northwestern right back in the game. What a drive. They needed that one after the start Michigan State had in this game. Matt. And where they were impressive, though, was on those third downs. They had to get them. And who won the line of scrimmage on those third downs? The Northwestern offensive line. And, oh, by the way, Justin Jackson broke a couple ankles down there. Jack Mitchell to kick it off. Back deep is R.J. Shelton. Back out to the 25 as we go to Mike Hall in Chicago with a T-Mobile studio update. Hey, Kevin, Nebraska's looking great, but this catch is looking great. Look at what Brandon Riley did. Ball was tipped three times as he was falling down backwards. He catches it. It would lead to a touchdown. Huskers are now up 17 zip in the first. Nebraska's starting fast on the road. The old tip drill. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Kids practice. You never know when it shows up, but when it does, be ready. Michigan State started fast in this one with two quick touchdowns, one offensive score, one defensive score. Now Brian Lewerke from the 25 with L.J. Scott in a hole. And Scott punishing into the secondary, pounding his way to the 48-yard line. Kevin, he was a cheat right there. They had Scott moved up. It was going to be a quick hitter. He's closer to the line of scrimmage, and it was a trap. And he hit that thing perfectly right up inside. You just see him just a little closer to the line of scrimmage, and it's going to happen fast. That quick inside trap, you want to be able to hit there with the confluence of the guard onto that tackle. They're kind of like rivers, you know, confluence of the river. Uh, that's and very I'll nice. Yes, that. Could you draw a map for me? Those are my sesquipedalian days. They're over. <laughs> From the 48 on first down, the key by Lewerke. Nowhere to go for Lewerke. Just dives forward for a yard. Fred Wyatt there to cover him up. Well defended, though, by Northwestern.
they're trying to exploit the inside of that Northwestern defense. With Allen at guard. And Lewerke with the pressure. Throws short to Price, and Price out of bounds just shy of the 45. Big with UK there for Northwestern. Pick up a four, and it brings up a third down and medium now for Michigan State. Yep. What you're seeing out of the worky is a calmness. So there's no, you don't see any sense of panic when he's on the run. He gets out to the side, he's just, okay, this is what I got. I'll just take this. Here's the side price. We'll set up for third down. Third and four. And he's got the first down. Just stuck the ball out as he went down the sideline. Enough to get the first chased out by Nate Hall. Hey, he's a cool cucumber. He is aware, very aware. He's making Mark D'Antonio look like uh, Nostradamus here. <laughs> No, Mark, Mark D'Antonio has been around. Staff has been around. They know what the kid can do. And so it's not an easy decision to make to replace your captain. But they did it, and you're seeing the evidence as to why. Lewerke, short toss, scooped up by line, breaks a tackle, and pounds his way for the first. Prescott line to the 30, picks up the 11, and a first down. Yeah, great effort by line, but the decision-making and the quickness to get the ball out from the work, he was excellent, as is just like a, like a, he's a bulldozer. And as already a college graduate, he knows he got enough for the first down. Graduate transfer from SMU. his man out of bounds inside the 25. Montre Hardage was there along with Jalen Prater. It's interesting for me to watch this Michigan State offense right now. Because, okay, so the early return, uh, and very early, on Lewerke, you like what you're saying. You like what your offensive line is doing. The offensive coordinator, Dave Warner now, he wants to spice things up. Now, once he's got his feet set, okay, we're in pretty good shape. Let's try to move things around a little bit. Now I can start manipulating the defense to get them out of position. Well done by Dave Warner. High snap, draw play. Scott picking his way through traffic with a flag down. And Scott is down inside the 15. We'll see if this one stands. This is a hold coming back. Takes away the 11-yard gain, man. Yeah, but regardless of that, Kevin, right now, this is as close as they've looked to that Notre Dame first half that we've seen. They've, they've been playing. This is a pretty good offense right here. Holding. Offense number 11. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. That's Jamal Lyles, number 11. You're going to see him right on the left side, right there. It's more of a choke hold, more than a hold. I mean, it's just nice, though. You were demonstrating that with some of our crew members earlier today, uh, the choke yeah. hold. Yeah. Well, he stole my French fry. <laughs> Second and 15. Lewerke over the middle, and he finds his tight end, Jamal Lyles. And Lyles down at the Northwestern 25, picks up nine. Jalen Prater on the tackle as we have reached the end of a very entertaining first quarter here in East Lansing at the end of one, Michigan State by a touchdown. Alumni Memorial Chapel in East Lansing, where Michigan State has a 14-7 lead as we start the second quarter. Kevin Kugler alongside Matt Millen, Lisa Byington on the field. Lisa's not in the alumni dance team 
she's not an alum of Michigan State, nor was she on the dance team. So that would immediately eliminate her, but it is homecoming, so the alumni dance team is back. It's a lucky guess by you. I know. I've done my research, Matt. I don't, don't want to. So now third and six as we start this second quarter with Michigan State leading 14 to 7. Lewerke oh, nice. to the sideline. Shelton, but he can't get away from Igwebuke. Igwebuke played that phenomenally well. They were trying to pick him on the outside. Igwebuke sensed it and got skinny. Watch him on the top side. See how he got over the top? You have to try to get skinny and small so you don't get hit. Igwebuke did that exceptionally well and punctuated it with an outstanding tackle. He's the Big Ten's leader in solo tackles per game, and you can see he's a sure tackler. Averages almost seven solos per game as Geiger comes on for a 41-yard field goal try, just two for five this year, but he does have a 48-yarder to his credit. The high snap is placed down. Geiger's kick sneaking around the right upright and through, and Michigan State adds to the lead now 17-7 with 14-15 remaining in the first half championship in a playoff standing, but from a Big Ten situation. Yeah, I wonder if they get uh, Wisconsin gets Vince Beagle back tonight. Very, that's a key player. Yeah. A really interesting game. 17-7 here. This one's been interesting as well. Michigan State with a 10-point lead as the kickoff coming with ball to Nagel back deep for Northwestern. This will be Nagel as he works up the right side. Got a block. And Nagel out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That I don't have to tell you that Sports Light with my calls on Wednesdays at 11 Eastern on BTN. You already know it. I had it on the other day. He had Austin Carr on. Showing him pictures of Trump and Hester. <laughs> Quick toss to the outside. There's Austin Carr. And Carr with some good balance withstands the little chop on the legs from Nicholson, and he's able to get a couple of more yards just shy of the first. He didn't know who Charles Heston was on that play either, but he still had a heck of a nice run there. This kid, this kid's turning into exactly what they need him to be. He's kind of a Wes Welker type. On second down, Justin Jackson gets the first to the 36, Andrew Dowell on the tackle. So you know what you have in Justin Jackson. But Austin Carr has been the guy and a piece of this puzzle right now that has kind of been sneaking up on people. So you have to identify where he's at all the time because they like to go particularly on third downs. Folson looking for a block. He got the block. And he's close to the first down. Takes a big hit from Raquan Williams, who's back after the arm injury a week ago. But he was directing Garrett Dickerson, man. Yeah, he was. Go block that guy. Yeah, he was like, get on him right away. But watch Raquan Williams, he just keeps on trucking. <laughs> and so he hits, he hits his own guy to hit the quarterback. That's like a two for one. <laughs> Second and one, Justin Jackson. He leads the first man and gets the first down. Diving in to try to make the play was Andrew Dowell. He got just enough to throw Jackson off, but he gets the first. They have the freshman Josh King in there right now, who's Looks like they're a little confused. He tried to run off, now he's running back on. Here's Carr again. And Carr into Michigan State territory. Put the end of the 46, picks up seven. Demetrius Cox and Monte Nicholson on the stop. Both good safeties, both solid tacklers. They've been active, so what what uh, Northwestern is doing right now is trying to make this defensive line run. And so they're spreading the things out and getting the ball to the perimeter. Thorson. Diving attempt, and he pulled that one in. Yeah. He did. What a catch by Flynn Nagel. Very close to the first down. Looked like Thorson was just trying to get rid of that ball and throw it away. Uh, he, he caught, he controlled that. It can touch the ground if he has control. He controlled that ball all the way through. I think that's a good call by the officials. Third down and one. Justin Jackson. Oh, he leads one man and gets the first down. Boy, is he slippery. He is quick. There's another guy in this league who does the same thing. His name is Saquon Barkley. He makes these same kind of cuts. Look at that one. He, he, hipped, he hipped that one through. 
Kept it pinned to his hip, still got the first. Oh, he's of, a little limp there by Justin Jackson. A couple of defenders were pawing at that one as Jackson heads to the sideline. Moten in now. You know, Kevin, one of the things as these officials get together, one of the things that's interesting for me is to see how they snap the ball back to Clayton Thorson. Please adjust the game clock to 11 minutes, 49 seconds. Brad North is the center, and they, they're a little Thank bit you. different with how they hold and grip the ball and snap it back to Thorson. So he picks it up, puts it head first. It's kind of a little unconventional. Throws him to the sideline. Did he get the foot down, oh, Flynn Nagel? He man. did. Punished that kicking net. It's been a rough month for kicking nets around the world of football. As first Odell Beckham Jr. and now Flynn Nagel. Yeah, but the net still made the tackle. Let's see <laughs> if he gets his foot down. There's the catch. There's the foot. Well done by our camera crew. And here's the tackle by the net. Thorson with a couple of yards to the 24 as McDowell makes the catch. Right into the net, right over the table. Yeah, that's that's great awareness, though, actually, with him to dive over that table still, instead of not getting it hit in a particular spot. Oh, no. Justin Jackson back in. Second down and nine. Thorson off play action. Oh, great job of defense. They're going to get called for it, though. There's going to be a hold on the outside. And look like Malik McDowell. He had it back trying to sneak out, and he just latched onto him, wouldn't let him go. It was a good play. Could have been a great play Holy if he'd have let him go early. Defense number four. Ten yards from the previous five. Automatic first down. And you saw it right away, Matt. He grabbed the hold. Well, yeah, because nobody else... On the did he was going to sneak out clean. That was the plan to sneak him down on a wheel route. But watch him. See, he's going to see how he just grabs him. So he was fine right there. Now let it go. That's where his mistake was. Yeah, that's um, that's, that's kind of if you were to look at a picture and say what might define holding. <laughs> yeah. That could be construed as holding by almost any definition. You know, I said you're going to hold them, hold them. Is Jackson on first down. McDowell gets in on that tackle at the 12-yard line. A two-yard pickup as we check in with Lisa. Just an update on Justin Jackson. A, a quick take job over his right ankle. He's still got a little bit of a, a, a slight limp, but he wanted to get back in there as quickly as possible. Oh, this drive's been building some momentum. No wonder we wanted to be a part of it. The 11th play of the drive, second and seven at the 11-yard line. The toss to Jackson. And McDowell played that so well, Matt. He makes the tackle at the nine-yard line. Yeah, he, he maybe got hit in the stomach, but that's a great play by Malik McDowell. Officials time out for an injured player. The whole key. Mm. Yeah, you can see him on the top side right here. He's got to stay square to the line of scrimmage. And then once the ball is pitched, Square now turn out. and go straight and you got to run him down. Boy, that's that's just a great play. And McDowell injured on the sideline while they tend to Malik McDowell will step aside. Malik McDowell walking to the sidelines being tended to there on that current drive, 11 play drive for Northwestern. Seven runs, four passes. They're three for six on third. They've converted three straight, but this a third and five at the nine. Look for pressure from the Michigan State defense. Here it comes. Movement up front. This is a free play. Thorson to the end zone. Touchdown! Clayton Thorson to the end zone finds Austin Carr. And Northwestern right back in this one. There's a shock. It was third down. Offside. Defense number 92. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. What's the first thing we said at the start of this show? In third downs, you have to keep your eyes on Austin Carr. He leads the Big Ten in reception yards. 
Another reception there and a touchdown on top of it. The biggest key, though, was great protection under pressure and forcing delivered. Mitchell on for the extra point. And Northwestern back within three. 17 to 14. Carr's seventh receiving touchdown this season. The most since Jeremy Ebert had 11 in 2011. Carr celebrating. He knows how. Fifth straight game with a touchdown. Northwestern gets back on the board, down 3, 17, 14, 10, 04. Remaining in the second quarter, Kevin Kugler alongside Matt Millen with Lisa Byington on the field. Very good ball game here between these two teams that are really anxious to get that win and get back to 500 on the year. I really like the concept, the route concept for the touchdown to Carr. Well done and well executed. Shelton. He's bringing it out from five yards deep. R.J. Shelton with a flag down, and Shelton upended just shy of the 30-yard line by Iguabuque. We'll see about the flag on the return, but usually that means the receiving team is going the other way. Seventeen fourteen ball game here. As John O'Neill will tell us what's going on. There are two fouls on the play. Holding during their turn, that penalty's declined. Illegal block in the back, number 16 by the return team. Ten, half the distance from the spot of the foul, first down. All right, Matt, let's go back to that touchdown and see why this is today's Ally Bank do it right. Well, the whole thing is on the protection first. That's the first thing right now. It's a seven-man protect, which is important because the protection requires seven people, and they do it. Six linemen and the back make seven, and then I want you to watch the route. They're going to clear. This takes time to be able to get to this spot. All that is predicated on the protection, and it's done perfectly, as just like Ally, they do it right. That is really well executed. Do I, do I get anything? No, no, no. A hearty handshake and a pat on the back. Thank you. Hey, that's not my back. <laughs> Here's Madre London. First carry for London, and London fights his way out near the eight. As we go back to Mike Hall in Chicago, he's got a T-Mobile studio update. And, Kevin, there's no offensive scoring for Indiana, but there's special team scoring. The blocked punt by Chase Dutra means it's 17-2 now, Nebraska. 17-2. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Lewerke under some pressure from his own end zone. He finds Corley on the sidelines, and the freshman able to get the feet in play and make the catch to get the first down at the 16. That's a great job by Corley, but a good job of the really official. See the official standing there? It's an incomplete pass. Oh, now they're going to say down no. The he is complete. This looked like his knee hit. It's hard to tell from the team. His left knee. Left knees, feet are in. The officials watching this thing perfectly. Watch his leg. Feet are in. Ooh, that's a tough one. Let's see it again. There's the feet. Yeah, it's his knee came down before as, the ball. Yeah, as he was catching the ball. So good job by the officials. Big third down here, just for the record. They need to get a little bit of that momentum back that they just lost. And a little bit of breathing room as well. Yeah. Because otherwise, Northwestern's got a good shot at a short field. Lewerke. Pressure coming, and he's blasted in the end zone. That's a safety. And Lewerke getting drilled by Joe Gaziano. That's a safety. He's tackled in the end zone. Result of the play is a safety. And they get the ball back. Huge play. It's the day of freshman. A redshirt freshman, Joe Gaziano, with his first career sack, and it's a safety. Now he's on the top side, and Machado just loses him. I mean, he never moves his feet. Gaziano does. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, there's the hit. He plants him on the inside of that line. So he's to the left of that line. 
The balls to that side. Oh, that's a good hit. That's a nice football play. And that's a safety. And Joe Gaziano. Fitz says, yes, it oh, is. He's an old defensive guy. Of course, he loves that stuff. So what ha what's happened right now? Northwestern has effectively swung everything back to their side. They'll get the ball back. And this Michigan State defense is going to have to find a way to be able to take that momentum back to their side. My, oh, my. Anytime you say to people, boy, football's changing, and of course it is, safety is going to eliminate all the big hits. Not going to eliminate all the big hits. Uh, that was a clean that was nice. tackle, and that was a form tackle and a huge hit. Yeah. Buckus would be proud of that. So now Hartbarger will handle the free kick duties. Northwestern's first safety since November 24, 2012 against Illinois. They got back into the safety business in emphatic fashion. with a low kick at the 40-yard line. It's Dickerson, and Dickerson into Michigan State territory at the 49. Thompson on the stop for Michigan State. But Garrett Dickerson, who's got some skills handling the ball, able to get it into Spartan territory at the 49. Good field position. Malik McDowell is back out for the defense. Check in quickly with Lisa Byington. Well, they added some extra padding to the left side, the left rib side of Malik McDowell. They even took out a stethoscope to measure his heart rate. He didn't grimace the whole time. He did look like he was in a lot of pain. One of the reasons why he's back out here on the field. From the 49 on first down, Thorson with pressure in his face. Got rid of it in time to make it Wilson. Wilson at the 41 as Dowell and Cox combined on the stop. Nine straight completions for Thorson, and he did it with Bulla rushing right in his face. They've been bringing pressure on him. And just from a year ago, Thorson is a much better player. He is a lot more calm in the pocket and more decisive. As Justin Jackson runs into Bulla, and Bulla wins that battle at the 38, but Jackson wins by getting the first down. First down has been big for this Northwestern team. They've been able to stay positive. And, and capture enough yards to put themselves in third and manageable. Here's Jackson. In the open field, made a man miss. Jackson out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Monte Nicholson with the tackle. Deontay Copeland had a chance to stop that play for virtually nothing, Matt. And Jackson slipped the tackle. You know, we spoke to the coaching staff at Northwestern. One of the things they said is, look, we just have to give Justin Jackson some room. If we can get him in space, he'll make a play. So they feel the same way. You get him one-on-one, -on -one, you have a chance. At the 16, first down. Diving catch by Jackson, but that's going to be a loss on the play of three yards. It's one of those passes that you're better off just letting bounce out of bounds. <laughs> Second 13. But the competitor in you won't yeah. allow you to. Yeah, so he has control of that all the way through, and that's a catch. Sets him second long. Full start. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty, still second down. That's Tommy Doles, the right guard. Yeah, just a sophomore, an aggressive guy. He's learning how to play in there. He's, he struggled a little bit, but he's uh, he, he's going to be okay. There's some parts to him, like that aggressive you can't teach. You either have it or you don't. Well, he's got it. Now, remember, the kicking has been a bit inconsistent at times this year for Northwestern. In fact, Pat Fitzgerald, the other day when we were talking, he said it's just not consistent enough. It continues to be an up-and-down process. If you're thinking field goal, second and 18 at the 24, Justin Jackson weaving and diving ahead back near the original line of scrimmage at the 16-yard line, Monte Nicholson on the stop. So what they're doing right now with that Michigan State defense is they're, they're counting on its ability to flow with the ball. 
And Justin Jackson is slowing it down just a little bit, letting the defense flow, and then he takes it back to the backside. And so if your backside guy doesn't make the tackle, he's got big space to the safety. A third and 10 here. Carr is in the slot to the top of your screen. On third down, pressure coming. Thorson trying to get rid of it in the area of Jackson. But that pressure creating havoc for Thorson and Andrew Dowell leading the charge of Spartans into the backfield. Yeah, that's a nice call by Harlan Barnett, the defensive coordinator. You can see him right uh, where he's right over in here. He's on this side, right over in this side. Here he comes right up in top. Yeah. The, Dow, he's not accounted for. Him. So they slide outside. He comes to the inside. Gotta get these glasses checked. <laughs> 33 yard attempt for Northwestern's first lead. Jack Mitchell is two for five on the year. The kick by Mitchell on its way, and Northwestern is all the way back from 14 down to take a 19 to 17 lead. The kicking game has been not consistent enough, says Pat Fitzgerald, but Jack Mitchell, the senior, gets congratulations. Fitz likes the consistency on that kick. Always a place where plenty of pictures are taken when you're on the campus in East Lansing. The Spartan statue right along the circle as you make your way towards Spartan Stadium. The Spartans find themselves down by a pair, 19-17, once up 14 to nothing. And now down to 19-17, remaining in this first half. RJ Shelton back deep. blowing off the tee. We've had a little wind today. Not as vigorous on the field as if you're up high like we are. You could feel it a lot more. That wind gusting a little bit today. Starting to affect play on the field. Southwest wind at 13 gusting I'm sure in the low 20s here this afternoon. Mitchell ready to kick this one off. Here's R.J. Shelton from the three-yard line. Shelton near the 20-yard line, and Shelton down right there. So, Matt Millen, it has been a very interesting game so far. You saw the 14-0 start for Michigan State. How has Northwestern come back to take the lead? Two guys, Clayton Thorson. I think he's been outstanding, especially after the pick. He's had a nice streak going, and then you got to have Justin Jackson. Justin Jackson has been everything they've wanted him to be. He uses his quickness rather than his speed. He's really effective. But you combine that with big play defense, you get that nice hit for the safety, and all of a sudden you're in the driver's seat. Now let's see how the worky, the freshman quarterback, can respond. Got the start today instead of Tyler O'Connor, and that almost intercepted. Timed perfectly, and then a couple of banged up players. That was Trey Williams, another freshman, who came in there Officials timing that one and for an injured player. Williams running into Monty Medeiros. Unable to get up. So Trey Williams, who got that starting job with both Matthew Harris and Keith Watkins out for Michigan State. Looks like he just landed on that hip. He had the interception last week against the Iowa Hawkeyes, now down here at Spartan Stadium. Stepping aside for a quick 30-second break with Northwestern up two. 30-second TV. Athletic training staff working with Trey Williams on the sidelines as he nearly came up with the pick. Jumping in front of Monty Medeiros on that pass from Brian Lewerke. And Lewerke facing Matt a little adversity. Started five for seven, but he's 0 for his last three, and his team's now behind on the scoreboard. A little misdirection as London tries to go around the right side, and Northwestern defends it exceptionally well. Only two yards to the 22-yard line. Anthony Walker, Jr., the first one there. Sets up third and eight. 
It's a third and eight. Defensively, you're going to stay in a zone, especially right down here. You're going to force that quarterback to have to see the whole field. Offensively, what you want to be able to do is understand you you still has to have ha, you still has to have enough time to be able to make the throw, but you've got to get to the chains. For a yeah, he gets the snap. Pressure's picked up, airing it out for Shelton. Tipped and incomplete. Mistimed it. The ball had a chance. Shelton jumped a little too soon, or he had an opportunity to make the play. That's a pretty well thrown ball. Hey, Lewerke, with UK out there, Matt. Yeah, Lewerke doesn't have. See how he jumped a little bit too soon? Should have taken at least one more step, and then that hang would have, could have resulted in a catch. Just a little bit off. Great effort, however. Eight, no question. Fourth and eight, though, and the punt team on. Hartbarger to punt away to Flynn Nagel. Nagel from the 33. Flynn Nagel. Third in the conference in average gets to the 43, a 10 yard return, but a flag down after the 45 yard punt. So, good field position for Northwestern in peril here. During the return, holding return team number 24, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Today's United States Marine Corps leader of the game is Northwestern's Joseph Jones. There's no greater leadership role than being a parent. He's a new dad. He and his wife Amber welcome their daughter Scarlett Elise during the bye week. So that's a busy bye week. He's got a double major in economics and communications with a minor in business institutions and a baby at home. And he's playing football in the Big Ten Conference. And guess which one takes precedence? That little one. Scarlett Elise, congratulations to Joseph and Amber. At the 31, first down. And Justin Jackson works his way to the 33 as we work our way to Lisa Byington. Well, you watch Thorson and you watch Jackson. They have great chemistry. They know each other well. There's great communication between the two. They're roommates off campus. They've grown up together. even played on the same AAU basketball team in high school. But Thorson told me, hey, Jackson's almost like a, a quarterback back there. He sees all the protections really well. He's seen it as I'm seeing it. And we sometimes say the same things on the field at the same time. Here's Jackson. Hit by Monte Nicholson. He read that right from the start. They brought a blitz, and that puts him in coverage from the back end as a safety. So he starts reading it right away, and yeah, that's that's just a nice hit. Justin Jackson kind of shrugs it off, but you could heal it up here. Sets up a huge third down for this Northwestern offense. Watch Malik McDowell lined up on the inside. Number four, he's right there on your screen to the right. Here he is. Third and nine, pressure comes to the sideline, and the catch made, diving by Carr for the first down. That's a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch. That's a phenomenal throw, and that's not an easy throw to make. That's all the way across the field. He goes and gets that thing. Ooh, let's see if he had that all the way through. It looks like he did. He did now, for sure. <laughs> Justin Jackson hit once and then spins down in the arms of Josh Butler. Raekwon Williams first got a contact. Justin Jackson, no gain on the play. Now, one of the things that this Michigan State defense knew that they had to do is be good on third down. And so they knew they had to be aware of Austin Carr, and they had to be able to generate pressure. They've only had five sacks all season, which is lousy. there for the moment. Second and nine. Jackson trying to go to the short side of the field. Michigan State is there. Ponte Nicholson, who had 17 tackles in the BYU game. He's going to have that number or more than that at the pace he's on right now. Well, they're trying to get to the perimeter. He makes another play again. Sets up third and long. This is where 
This Michigan State defense has got to get pressure. And the offensive line of Northwestern's done a nice job of protection so far. For a line that allowed 16 sacks on the year entering play. Right. They've helped that with a lot of quick tosses to the edge throughout the day. Third day. Pressure again. And this time, Dawson is sacked. Malik McDowell. Like a heat-seeking missile. Right to Thorson, Josh Butler there to help out and close the door. If you listen real close, you could hear the coaches say, it's about time. And this is what they've been looking for. Now, he just he just ran past Dobbs' guard, number 71. It wasn't even close. Dob, he turns back inside. And he sticks in with Justin Jackson, which is a complete mismatch. You have to go big on big up front, especially with Malik McDowell, who's very talented. Yeah, that's a tough matchup for anybody. Tommy Doles had that one go right by. And now fourth down and 16 and a timeout's utilized charge, by timeout. Northwestern. Northwestern. Two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Quick 30-second timeout. Nineteen seventeen, two nineteen remaining in the first half, and a fourth down at sixteen. Northwestern will punt it away, and Michigan State with a pair of timeouts to see if they can navigate down and grab the lead before halftime. Sowards the deep man, and Sowards at the twenty-two. Looked up and saw nothing but white and purple in front of him. And he takes it to the 28-yard line. Alonzo Mayo there to finish it off. 42-yard punt and a six-yard return. Now the Spartans from a year ago, look at the differences. Third down offense, third down defense, and sacks. We talked about that pressure. They have not been getting. No, they haven't. And that's why that last third down was so big. And third down on defense, they've been getting them in third and longs, and they still haven't been able to get there. So this has really just been about third down. they have got to be able to improve on third down, see what they can do in this series. From the 28, Shelton going back the other way. Shelton looking for running room, and he won't find it. Quick to the edge, Nate Hall with the tackle. Oh, Hall got on his horse right there. With all the running lateral, you're not gaining ground on. It sets up this second and 11, but Hall, man, looks like he was shot from a gun from the inside out. Well played. Northwestern has two timeouts as well. If they hold Michigan State without any yardage on this play, do they start to use one of their two timeouts? Yeah, you think that they would. Now remember, that kicking game has been inconsistent for Northwestern this year as Lewerke, running for his life, slings it short, and Holmes up the right sideline, makes his way across the 30 to the 32-yard line. How he picked up that last four yards is beyond me. He was... He was surrounded by a bunch of ill-intentioned <laughs> defenders. Wildcats are not using a timeout here. And now third and six for Michigan State. We talked about it a moment ago. Third downs have been a problem for the Spartans this year, especially when compared to last year. Now, they're not in any urgency here. They're just trying to run this one down. It might be because they're trying to protect their freshman quarterback, but they're still putting them in this situation, see how he responds. On third down, Lewerke, they'll just throw that one away. Pressure coming from Alex Miller, and Lewerke got rid of it. It's fourth down. Coming up at halftime, Rick Stanley and Howard have all the scores and highlights from today's Big Ten action. That's coming up on the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. So the Spartans bogged down here. And the punt team will come on once more with Jake Hartbarger. One thing Lewerke is going to have to get a little bit better on just after these last couple series is don't bail so fast. Still trust that your pocket's going to be there. He's probably still remember that hit he took on the safety. Good punt by oh, that's Hartbarger. A, that's a monster. Nagel fielding it and backing up to the five. 
Nagel to the 10, and he's not going to get much further than that. Down at the 12 in the arms of Matt Morrissey. That was a sky-high 59-yard punt. And with the fact that Northwestern's going to get the ball to start the second half, they're back at their own 12. Got to believe that Pat Fitzgerald is just going to say to this team, yeah. let's go to the locker room. Yeah, you take this one as a win. You're down by 14. You clawed your way back. You're in control of this game. Score still tight. We get the ball back. That third, first series of the third quarter will be your most important. Pat Fitzgerald, you can see him waving on the sideline saying, we're going in, guys. They're going to take a knee, and we are headed into the locker room. That'll be the final play of the first half. A first half that saw Michigan State spring to a 14 to nothing lead, and Northwestern fighting back to take a 19-17 lead into the locker room. Very interesting game. And remember, we told you at the top of the broadcast, there's only one way in and one way out of Spartan Stadium. It's this tunnel. So Northwestern goes into the pipe first. Michigan State waiting to get in. And then you see there's a separation between the teams, the officials. It's like a really bad two-layer cake. You've got one team, officials, that's your filling. That's and, the, the and, then, and that's the filling in the middle. And then you get the players, Michigan State, going in afterwards in one small tunnel to the locker rooms. Kevin, the one, the one thing that both sides, offense and defense, have to be better out here for Michigan State is they've got to finish. So we have to show it. We've reached halftime with Northwestern leading Michigan State by just two. In nature, red means danger. The red dart frog, deadly. The red mamba, deadly. Those red triangles on a black widow, you see where we're going with this. So when you foolishly think this is an opportunity to make a name for yourself, remember both nature and our menu warned you. So maybe pick a color more pleasing to your fragile palate. May we suggest something in the green to yellowish section. What if we designed a paint that not only made your bathroom look like a spa, but stood up to the humidity of a shower this steamy, this steamy, yep, even this one. If it's a matte finish paint and can resist any amount of moisture, is it still paint? Find Aura Bath & Spa, only at your Benjamin Moore retailer. At Supercuts, we pay attention to every detail, so you'll feel sharp, clean, and ready to go. And when you're not feeling ready, we'll get you ready to go again. Now you can save time by checking in online. Jennifer Martinez just gave herself a raise. $253 a month to be exact. By refinancing her mortgage, Jennifer was able to put all that extra money back into her home-based business, month after month. Helping her pursue her passion and do what she was destined to do. Like a boss. Buy in. Quicken Loans. Home buy, refi, power. What's it gonna be? An oven baked DiGiorno or waiting for delivery? Did you have that beard when we ordered? Oh. A hot, fresh baked crust or. Did we order extra soggy? Don't settle for delivery. Rise to the occasion. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. Welcome inside our BTN studios for the Buffalo Wild Wings Halftime Report. Rick Pizzo, Stan Jackson, Howard Griffith along for the ride. Northwestern on top of Michigan State, 1917 at the half. Let's take you out to East Lansing and show you how the Wildcats earned that lead after the first 30 minutes. Down by 10, Clayton Thorson finding Austin Carr. 
Howard, did you know Austin Carr is the Big Ten's leading wide receiver? Yeah, he's pretty good, isn't he? First Northwestern receiver with a touchdown in five straight games since 2001. And then Joe Gaziano welcomes mm. Ryan Lewerke to the Big Ten in emphatic fashion. The safety, Northwestern would add a field goal late in the half. Wildcats on top of Michigan State, 19-17 at the break. Northwestern has struggled offensively at times this year, Howard, but they found something against Iowa. They've kept it going a little bit in the first half here, and a big reason why, they've been effective on third down. And you have to be. You need to be able to stay on the field and be able to convert, and they've done a good job of keeping it in third and manageable situations. So that gives them the option to either throw it or run it. Okay, I've got a couple of highlights here that I want you to take a look at. When you get in a third and manageable, third and three, you've got options here. But when you've got Justin Jackson making guys missing the hole and taking it to the house, that's a great advantage. How about this one? Third and one, you're going to run it again. Guy in the hole, he makes a miss. Justin Jackson is doing a tremendous job. Then they decide third and five, they want to throw it. And we've seen this guy, Austin Carmen, plays all year long. They're really figuring things out in third down situations, and they're taking advantage of it. Well, and for Michigan State, we may see the beginning of a new era for Brian Lewerke. Solid work here in the first half. Has a touchdown pass. He also ran the ball effective. Away, 8 for 14, 79 yards. But he's very effective. So you're going to see him right here in the third down and eight. Perfectly placed ball to the outside. That's what you call a drop in dimes right there to RJ7. First and 10, a little pump fake. Nothing's there. Ooh. Don't force it. Pull the ball down. Pick up 24 yards. Get to the edge. Get out of bounds and protect yourself. Second down 11, a little play action pass to the big guy, Josiah Price, for his first touchdown pass. If this young man can continue to play well and protect the football, not put the defense in a bad position, maybe Michigan State has their quarterback for the future. 109 total yards for the worky and that touchdown. Most importantly, no turnovers in the first half. Spartans down by two at the break. Entertaining ball game through one half here in East Lansing with Northwestern coming back from 14 down to take a 19-17 lead at halftime. Alongside Matt Millen, I'm Kevin Kugler. Great to have you with us today from Spartan Stadium. And Matt, it's really been a hot start for Michigan State and now Northwestern with the big comeback and the Cats with a two-point lead. Yeah, they settled themselves down. They had the new starter that they had to figure out. I think they did that. And then I think what they were able to do is just capitalize on what they do well. But they, Brian Lewerke started off like a house on fire. He had excellent protection up front, made good decisions, and then they kind of settled in, and Northwestern was able to get a couple of hits on him. Not before he did the damage with making the touchdown throw, but the defensively, I think they adjusted. Offensively, it all starts with Justin Jackson. You get him space, and they've been doing that. And then Clayton Thorson, I think, has been playing exceptionally well here with his decision-making. That was that sudden stop that made the freshman think twice. Fitz was happy about all that. A 19-7 lead, or 19-17 lead for Northwestern as we check out our Quicken Loans quarterback comparison. Clayton Thorson, 14 of 19. He completed 11 of his last 13. Justin Jackson, 18 carries, 98 yards. Lewerke, a lot of his work done early in this one as Northwestern holds the two-point lead as we get set to start the second half. Northwestern will have the football to start the second half when we return on BTN. Homecoming Grand Marshals, the Izzo family last night at the homecoming parade. Amalou Bezo uh, at halftime a moment ago being honored here at halftime as Tom Izzo waves to the crowd as we check in downstairs with Lisa Byington. Well, we know Tom Izzo, Mark D'Antonio have a great relationship and stay the course was the message that Tom Izzo told Mark D'Antonio this week. It was actually a message that D'Antonio gave to Izzo last year in the basketball season when Denzel Valentine was hurt and they lost a couple of games. I actually was even able to speak to Mark D'Antonio here walking off for at halftime. He talked about Justin Jackson, a couple of things they want to do. They want to get numbers on him. He said few going one-on-one -on -one can be him and tackle him. He's beating us mostly on the inside cutback, so we need to find him 
numbers on him and push him to one side and keep his direction to the one side. I said, what does Brian Lewerke need to do in the second half? He said one word, poise. He needs to stay poised. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. We saw some points early yeah. from the youngster. I think he's got that, Kim. I, I don't think that's going to be a worry. Ready to kick this one off. Kevin Cronin handling the kickoff duties for Michigan State. Drives this kickoff. To Solomon Wall, three yards deep in the end zone. He'll kneel for the touchback at Northwestern out to the 25-yard line. So we've seen what, or heard what Mark D'Antonio wants to do to try to slow down Northwestern. What do you make of what Northwestern did in that first half, and how do they continue in the second half? Yeah, I think they just stayed the course. I think what they did was just followed their game plan. Get the ball to Justin Jackson's hand. And they manipulated the defense by formation, got receivers to one side. That cutback we talked about in the first half, it's exactly what they're doing. Justin Jackson can make one guy miss. That's what they're doing. So he says, give him numbers. That means he wants an extra guy down there for Justin Jackson. From the 25, first down, quick toss to Jackson on the edge. Trying to get him in space. That's usually a good decision as he's finished off by Riley Bullock at the 31-yard line. Okay, there's your numbers, okay? Riley Bullock does a nice job of coming inside out. He made the first guy miss. You're going to have to have more than one tackler, but that's a nice pickup of six yards. Here's Jackson trying to sweep to the left, and he gets to the 31, back to the line of scrimmage. No gain because Demetrius Cooper was there. So, Kevin, here's this has been the story for Michigan State on defense. you got to win third down. Michigan State has not done a good job on third downs. Third and long and third and short like this, third medium right now. So winning third down is imperative for this Michigan State defense. Northwestern's been better than average today on third. Third and four, Thorson, quick toss, catch is made, first down, Andrew Scanlon all the way across the 40 to the 43-yard line. And for Scanlon, just his seventh catch of the year, a pickup of 12. I mean, that's just a route that, that's a simple route. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. There's a good protection. If you listen close, you can hear the coverage blow up. That thing was blown from the start. Nagel found a hole in that coverage down there, and because the protection was good, the offensive line wins that. Thorson's able to put it on the money, and that's another six quick. The longest catch and the first touchdown of Flynn Nagel's career. He only played in five games a year ago before injury ended that season and a four play 75 yard drive and Northwestern stuns the crowd at Spartan Stadium out of the locker room and right into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, the first thing is look at the protection. There's lots of great protection all the way around. And the second thing is there's nobody sitting there. No one sitting there at all. That was a completely blown coverage. Here's Rawl 22. So you got three off here. Let's see what happens on the top side. Looks like they have their two safety sitting deep. They're going to split that. Now you got to go. Oh, there's your drop. Yeah, he has to sink in coverage right here. The guy trailing. He's got to sink in coverage. He tried to sneak up and had a little bit of nose trouble with the guy underneath him. When you're clearing that deep safety, the guy, this, the corner on the outside, he's got to get depth. If he doesn't, things like that happen. Wow, Northwestern blasting out of the locker room with a touchdown, and now a two-score lead. R.J. 
is Schulte from the one yard line. Schulte down at the 20 yard line. And the start of the second half continues kind of a disturbing trend for Michigan State, allowing a lot of problems to arise in second halves of games. Their defense has really struggled yardage-wise, but more so points-wise. Look at that, first half, 45, and now 107 points allowed in the second half by the Spartan defense. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. They've got to, they've got to be able to finish. A lot of pressure here on this young, young freshman. Lewerke with a four-man rush in trouble. Lewerke trying to flip it, and it's caught by L.J. Scott, and Scott goes out of bounds. Looks like a yard behind the line of scrimmage. They may give him progress back to the 20. If you were just joining us and you're wondering why Brian Lewerke is in, Mark D'Antonio today made the decision. Tyler O'Connor was not going to start, the man who started all year long, and Brian Lewerke, the redshirt freshman, would get the nod. He got off to a hot start, threw a touchdown pass, and his defense provided a score. It was 14-0 Michigan State before some of the fans got settled into their seats here at Spartan Stadium. But since that time, Northwestern has surged into a 26-17 lead. Lewerke's pass caught at the 24-yard line, and down immediately is R.J. Shelton. And it'll bring up third down. Well, coverage has been pretty good. So he's throwing it to tighter windows. I'd like to see him just hang a little bit more in that pocket. He has the feet to be able to get outside, but he has been decisive, and he's going to have to be here on third and five. Can run. Got him. Throws on the run, and he's got Corley for the first down. It's all on the working. Corley does a nice job of staying alive with his route, but Lewerke is able to buy time and roll out to his left. See how he squares his shoulders? That's all natural for him. That's a freshman he needs to get the ball to more. That's the one guy they have who could be their playmaker. Sixth among all power conference freshmen is Donnie Corley in receiving yards entering play today. He is a playmaker. Draw play to LJ Scott. And Scott runs into the arms of Walker, and Walker stops him at the line of scrimmage. No gain. We talked at the top of the broadcast, Matt, about the urgency of this game for both of these teams. You see Michigan State. You can't afford to fall no. any farther behind in the East Division. Northwestern just trying to keep up with a jumbled West Division right now. Well, Kevin, it's like we said, there are teams in your schedule that you know you're not going to be favored against. Then there's teams that you are favored. And then there are these teams, the coin flip games. These are the ones that define your season. Not to mention that you need those six wins to get yourself to a bowl game. And, well, there are some teams on the schedule that are going to make it awfully tough on each of these teams remaining here. Third down and eight, now at the 40-yard line for Michigan State. Well, now is not the time, but right now what Northwestern defensively is doing is they're, they're forcing Lewerke to throw into a about a 15-yard box. At one point, they have to take a shot. they got to spread this thing, get it open a little bit. David Beadle in at left guard now for Tyler Higby on third down and eight at the 40-yard line. Lewerke with protection, and it's too tall for Corley. Yeah, it looked like it was an option round at the top of that thing, and they misread it. Corley did it out, and he was expecting something deeper. And so now fourth down, and starting to see just a little frustration on this Michigan State offense. There was some communication between the two freshmen. Yeah, and they're talking about it right now. Like, what did you see? And that's one of the things that you, you know, you're going to have to live through that. Because Lorkey hasn't been out there. Corley hasn't been out there. And so that happens. And the 
fair catch call that made by Nagel at the 14-yard line. Being a college football coach is not easy. Pat Fitzgerald and Mark D'Antonio know that a win in this game could be the difference between going to a bowl or stay at home. This moments ago, Matt Millen, Tyler O'Connor, a little warm-up toss and a thumbs up. Helmet on, starting to loosen up a little bit. Are they going to lift the freshman starter and bring back the senior captain? That looks like a great indicator. If your mom reading my keys, I would say yes. On first down, toss to the sideline. Solomon Volk trying to get away, and he'll be down at the 22-yard line in the arms of Justin Lane and Demetrius Cox. What does that do if you go with Lewerke as your starter and now second half he gets set down again? I mean, I think right now what it means is that Coach D'Antonio said, look, everybody be ready. I think that's what that means. Yeah, we got a game to win. And that's the most important thing. And before we even get to that, by the way, on this third down, we've got to get a stop right here. Got to be able to get a stop. Lee McDowell, the, the, the guys who are your players, they've got to make a play. Find a way to make a play. Who's going to make a play right now? That's what's got to happen. Identify where he is, cover him. They identified him, they covered him, and the ball was perfectly thrown. Look at this window it's in. That is just really well done. Cox was right there. I mean, it was he was all over it. And I'm grading that. That's a that's an A play for the safety, but an A plus for the receiver and the quarterback. 228 yards on third down for Austin Carr this year. To the sideline, there's Carr again. Not sure he was allowed to catch passes on first down, but he did, and it's at the 41-yard line. Eight-yard pickup for Austin Carr. He came into this, Matt, leading the Big Ten in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Since 1990, there have been two guys to lead in all three categories, Allen Robinson at Penn State and Desmond Howard. That's it. That's the list. Nobody else. He's an elite company. Michigan State territory at the 45. And it's been the car drive, and it's been the car year, leading the Big Ten in all of those categories. Yeah, so there's one thing to have the numbers. There's another thing to say, look, we got to stop Carr on third down, and he still has the numbers. That's the most impressive thing. This is a guy who a year ago had 16 catches for 302 yards. First down, Thorson on the run to the sidelines, open is Scanlon, and Scanlon's got a first down, Shannon tackles, and Scanlon all the way down to the 25-yard line, he gets 20 before Justin Lane can finally catch up to him. They, they are not getting pressure, Thorson is throwing the ball with decisiveness and accuracy, and this is what you get. And so, excellent play calling right now by Northwestern. Defensively, I tightened my coverage. From the 25. Thorson looking for the end zone, and that's incomplete. He was trying to find Bennett Skoranek with Josh Butler all over him at second down. Skoranek has the top side, that's just an overthrown ball, but I mean, you have to take that shot. He had somebody to the middle of the field, I didn't see who it was, the number, but he had somebody to the middle, instead he took that shot, sets up his second and down. Jackson, jumping over a blocker. Jackson gets the edge and gets out of bounds with a first down. Fry had a chance to get him, he just reached out late. Couldn't pull him down, and a pickup of 11. Yeah, watch the patience. Right before the leap, nice leap. 
Yeah, right before that, he just slowed it down to let his blockers get in front of him and give him exactly what he needed. Another first down for Northwestern. And another 100-yard game for Justin Jackson. From the 14 on first down, the option, the pitch to Jackson. And Jackson bouncing off Morrissey and gets out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Well, Northwestern has done exactly what they said they want to. Watch this nice stiff arm right here. Right there, right in the, right in the top of the helmet. Really well done. Just gets a complete back. But what they wanted to be able to do was get him in space and let him use his ability to make you miss. And they've done just that. It's a nice game plan by this uh, Northwestern offensive staff. And John Moten, the fourth now in running back. As Thorson keeps the seat parts, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. That's a quarterback. Clayton Thorson turned the corner and saw the end zone beckoning. Slipped through the arms of Josh King and stretches the Wildcat lead. Nice call. Even better execution. It comes down to Thorson with his read. They vacate, you fill the void. He did it well. Nick McCall's got to be thrilled. The offensive coordinator for Northwestern. His offense hitting on all cylinders right now. They put up 38 against Northwestern. And now the Wild, or against Iowa rather, and now 33 points on the board against Michigan State. And Clayton Thorson, cap of the 10-play, 86-yard drive with the touchdown run. And the Wildcats start to pull away at East Lansing. At halftime, Lisa told us that they had to get numbers on Justin Jackson. So here are the numbers. They're in man coverage. They're taking these two guys right here. This is who you're, who you're optioning off of. And so once they void outside with the numbers, you're just reading Malik McDowell, and Thorson does the whole thing perfectly. Nice block back to the inside on Bullock, and it's six quick. Really well executed. 33-17 Northwestern. They were down 14-0 in the first. This kickoff will go through the end zone for the touchback. And Michigan State will go back to the old quarterback. Tyler O'Connor will make his way out onto the field to try to lead this offense back for Michigan State. And it's an offense that has slowed considerably since the fast start to this ballgame. Can O'Connor provide the spark as Lewerke will put on the headset and learn from the sidelines. Look at this, from the first quarter on, first quarter, six first downs, 144 yards since, one first down, 23 yards. And on first down, not much running room for Madre London. So Tyler O'Connor coming off the bench first time this year that he's done that but his last three games this is why the change was made 0-3 record and a completion percentage of under 55 percent his first three starts dating back to last year that completion percentage was 70 percent if you peel back the onion a little bit behind those numbers you'll see the one thing that's caught up to him is his lack of decisiveness he holds on to the ball just a little bit too much second eight pressure coming and he hits the sideline for josiah price who breaks two tackles and price has the first down all the way out to the 41 yard line a pickup of 14 on the play and josiah price and the spartans move the chains so northwestern knows that and so what do they do they try to hasten that thing try to make him have to do something so they bring pressure and they get a little bit of a hit on o'connor he was limping a bit afterwards yeah, yeah. deep down the scene looking for shelton First the protection, well thrown ball, 
And that is a Big Ten standout if I've ever seen one. Well done by Shelton. R.J. Shelton with Michael Geiger on for the extra point. And a spark thrown into Spartan Stadium with Tyler O'Connor on the field. Two plays, two receptions, one spectacular touchdown grab by R.J. Shelton. Mark Antonio's in his 13th year as a head coach, 10th at Michigan State. He has never in his head coaching career had a four-game losing streak. They're on a three-game skid right now, but his offense providing a little lift a moment ago. Tyler O'Connor with a touchdown pass to R.J. Shelton to give a little bit of a lift to Michigan State, get him right back in this game. And, and bigger than that, though, Kev, they stre stretched the field. Remember I said they were throwing within a 20-yard box? They, they need that. you got to be able to stretch that thing to loosen this secondary up a little bit. Nick Buque was all over that. He tipped the ball, but Shelton just stayed with it. through the end zone for the touchback to the 25. Well, two catches in that last drive for Michigan State to get the offense back on track. Well, Josiah Price in the sideline and the good effort to pick up the first down gave them a little bit of life. And the life that it led to was this deep ball. Now watch the coverage. Iggy Buke, he gets turned around. He's able to get his hand on it, but Shelton perseveres, stays with it, and the result is you're right back in this game. Now, though, your defense has, has to figure to get out a play. way to stop Northwestern. Right. Remember, Northwestern wasted little time marching down the field and scoring on their own. Correct. Right. They have not gotten any pressure on Clayton Forson at all. On first down at the 25, the quick toss out to Nagel. And Nagel finds very little running room thanks to Deontay Copeland. A yard gained on the play, second and nine. Copeland did a nice job of leveraging that. That means get the defender to the inside, give the receiver only one way to go. Nicholson, the safety, was coming down, and they made the play. with his 23rd carry, and he gets to the 30-yard line. Jackson ran sideways yeah. on that play, man. But Kevin, what they're, see, they're trying, it's the same thing we said in the, in the first half. They're trying to get the defense to flow, and then he's cutting it back. So he's running sideways to get them to believe the fake, which is not really a fake. If they don't, he'll take off and run. But he's been cutting things to the backside. Anyway, sets up this third down. Big down right here for both sides. Michigan State trying to build on that momentum their offense provided. Forsen, and a diving attempt. Jumbo, that's going to be picked off by Riley Bulla. See if it Don't didn't hit the ground. The pick. Riley Bulla with the interception. Solomon Bolt, the intended receiver, and it's Michigan State ball. Or is it? Well, Riley's not, he's not as excited as you normally see him. Let's see if it didn't touch the ground here someplace. Yeah, we saw it already. Watch it here. This is a great angle of it. Yeah, there you go. Great that camera shot by our guys. Well done down there, guys. You can see. Riley Bullitt did such a good job of selling it that the officials, at least initially, were able to glance at it and say, yeah, that's an interception. I but don't bounce twice. Yeah, I don't believe that Riley even knew that it hit the ground. He probably. It's going to be Michigan State ball after a Northwestern punt, however, because it'll be an incomplete pass and bring up a fourth down. And you see what Mike Perra told us yeah, earlier? When they're writing, usually a sign they're going to overturn something. Yep, exactly. We're, we're right on you, Mike. Yep. No fooling us. <laughs> Herrera's given up all the secrets yeah, today yeah. on this BTN broadcast. Open the vault. <laughs> so it'll be fourth down, and what that means is Michigan State builds, Matt, on go. the momentum that their offense yeah. provided. They get the three and out, they're going to get the ball back. It's exactly what they needed to have done. And so you can feel it shift a little bit. 
the most important thing for Michigan State on the other side, once they get the ball, is not to say, hey, we need a big play. You need consistency. You need consistent play, as does Northwestern defensively. They need to do what they have been doing. As they're scribbling on their pads, we're going to show you what they're scribbling down when it happened. There's the ball hitting the ground, and now they're going to have to find out where the ball goes back to, how many seconds they have to put back on the clock, all that After stuff. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. As a result, it's going to be fourth and five at the 30-yard line. Please adjust the clock to 458. The crowd booing about this, but that was clearly an incomplete pass. Mark D'Antonio knows he's getting the ball back anyway. Both these coaches are cut from the same cloth. <laughs> Both of them. I, I love their approach to the game of football. Good teachers, good enthusiasm, good stuff. All I know is if you have a secret that you don't want told, tell it to Mark D'Antonio. <laughs> exactly. We tried nine different ways to Sunday to get the word as to who was going to be the starting quarterback when we chatted with him yesterday, and he wouldn't tell a soul. <laughs> Sowards from the 23-yard line for Michigan State. A good coverage by Northwestern as he's down near the 28, a 47-yard punt and a four-yard return. Today's installment of Dr. Pepper Traditions of the Game, a new tradition. Sparty, the new statue unveiled Wednesday, a mainstay seated comfortably inside the Student Union. Allison Brown, the Oregon-based sculptor, even members of our crew hanging out. Garza's everywhere. Every time we do something, Garza is there. Sponsored by Dr. Pepper. It's a tradition. Not only the tradition of the game, but the tradition of our crew. Garza's sponsored by Dr. Pepper. <laughs> from the 28-yard line on first down. O'Connor on his second series with the play pick. A quick block. O'Connor over his middle and he finds the open receiver, Jamal Lyles, for the first down to the 45-yard line as we check in with Lisa Bynes. I've been watching the exchange between the rookie and O'Connor on the sideline. It continues to be smooth and very business-like. No raw emotions. There was no attitude by the rookie. There was no over-exuberance by O'Connor. They actually even fist-pumped. It's almost like they expected that a switch might be made. Remember, Mark D'Antonio has talked all week that he could use multiple quarterbacks in this game. Well, he certainly has as Holmes gets one yard. Michigan State, Matt, one thing they have not been able to do again today is establish any kind of a running game. The most rushing yardage they have is from Lewerke on scrambles. They have 71 yards as a team. Yeah, particularly on the inside. They, they've been trying the inside. And they, they have not had success there at all. Well, there are four minutes to go in the third. Second and nine, Michigan State. Coming. It is step away. Good work by O'Connor. Oh. Then he misses Shelton. Shelton was open. Nate Hall providing the rush, but great work in the pocket by Tyler O'Connor. Yeah, that's as good as it gets. That's that's drill work right there. You can see all the practice is right there coming out of him. And then he has he has the, the receiver open. He just misfires. No, that's scramble drill. And so part of the scramble drill that's tough is you, it's not a known route. So you don't know exactly what the heck you're going to get. One thing you do know you're going to get out of Mike Hankowitz is pressure on this quarterback. And so far, they've been able to do that. Mike Hankowitz and Dave Warner worked together at Kansas a few years back. They're very familiar with one another. The offensive coordinator of Michigan State and Northwestern's defensive coordinator. That's a strip on the attempted sack, and it's recovered by Northwestern. Joe Gaziano, who had the safety earlier, comes up with the strip after Infadi Onenabo rips it out of the arms of Tyler O'Connor. Odenabo oh, had four sacks against Iowa, Matt. He comes in, provides the pressure, and Gaziano gets the loose yeah, ball. Here he is right down here. I want you to watch. When he gets even with his hips, it's over. Right there to the inside. That is just great field. So he powers him, and then he comes back to the inside, gave him a two-way go, and gets the strip. Gaziano is just... 
flopping around there looking for a ball. <laughs> That's a big time play. And derails the momentum Michigan State was building. Dickerson now in motion. And smart defense trying to answer the bell. Forcing with protection and it's incomplete. Nice job here by the offensive line of Northwestern. I think, remember we said at the start, whoever wins the line of scrimmage will win this game. I think right now, Northwestern has taken charge of that. They've been able to get to the passer on the defensive side with only four, and offensively, they've been protecting exceptionally well. Second and 10 at the 41. Justin Jackson reversing his field, and Jackson to the 37 yard line. You've got to be very patient on a play like that, waiting for that crease to open up. Third down and six now for Northwestern. That's all that is, is just getting numbers to a side and running away from numbers. It's just, just smart football by the Northwestern staff. Michigan State showing a little pressure. Here it comes, and Jackson is buried by Malik McDowell. He almost took the handoff from Thorson. Remember we said you had to identify where he's going to line up? Now he's lined up right over the center. So you cover off both guards. What does that do? That puts one-on-one -on -one in the center. And then they slide the line. They tried to slide off McDowell. You can't have a guy coming down with a man his quickness. That was a mistake, and McDowell made him pay for it. Nine tackles, one and a half sacks for Malik McDowell. Not even through the third quarter yet. Short punt, Sowards calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 14-yard line, where it'll be first down for Michigan State. If you've not gotten the app or updated it yet, you've got to go to your app store and Google Play and get BTN to go. It's fully customizable for your favorite team. You can watch live games. You get daily exclusive video from BTN. You can even watch some of the clips from Sportslight with Mike Hall. How about that? Oh, right wow. there on your BTN to go app. Download it today. I'm there. Yeah. I like Charlton Heston. <laughs> I don't believe he's a regular on the show. Oh, darn. He did have Mike Adamley there, too. Also and not I a regular pitch. on the show. Oh, darn. Mike Hall's a regular. No excitement on that one. First and ten at the 14. O'Connor looking deep again. He's got Shelton up and Shelton's got it. R.J. Shelton takes it all the way for the touchdown. An 86-yard touchdown bomb from Tyler O'Connor to R.J. Shelton. So you say we needed some explosive <laughs> plays. That's a way to do it. He got isolated on Mayo outside, and Shelton just, he slammed right past him with the throw. The throw was perfect. Right where it had to be, RJ Shelton took it to the house. And the kick is good. Michael Geiger pounds the extra point home, but RJ Shelton's been on the receiving end of two huge touchdowns. This one, 86 yards. The third time O'Connor and Shelton have gone for over 50 yards for the score in the last three games, and O'Connor says, yeah, we're right back in this one. Michigan State feeling a little better as are the fans at Spartan Stadium we're right back in this game down just two as the kickoff will bounce at the five fielded there Vault with some running room on the sidelines uh oh Solomon Vault veering to the middle of the field got a block Solomon Vault gonna try to set the energy out of this crowd as he takes it all the way for the touchdown no flags on the field Solomon Vault. Where's the energy now? 
He just sucked it right out of this stadium. What a great play by Volk. Normally, when the ball bounces, it generally doesn't end up as a good thing. This time, it hit the ground and he just took it the other way. That's exceptional. Here's Jack Mitchell for the extra point. An 86-yard touchdown strike for Michigan State. Northwestern responds with a 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And it's a 40 to 31 lead. Northwestern back up by two scores. Right, this is just running with your eyes. It's all this is. So the once you have a plan when the ball comes to you on kickoff return. Once that ball hits the ground, the timing's all screwed up. So then you have to just make something happen. Well, Solomon Vault, like I said, used his eyes, and it did make a huge play happen. That 95-yarder, the fourth kickoff return touchdown in the career of Solomon Vault. His first was an 89-yarder against Illinois in the finale of the 2014 season. So he has four kickoff return touchdowns in essentially a year and a half. One in the finale of 2014, two last year, and now one this year. Seems easy for him, doesn't it? My goodness. Still 153 to go in the third. 71 points on the board. Well, next weekend, it's a triple header of action. Hopefully, it's all like this. Indiana Northwestern at noon Eastern. Then at 3.30, the Wolverines are taking on the Illini. Primetime matchup is Maryland-Michigan State. Our coverage will start with a busy day next Saturday, noon Eastern on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go. grocery store or grab a soda. <laughs> she missed two huge plays in the last three real-time minutes. Mitchell's kickoff. RJ Schultz going to take a knee. And Michigan State back to work again. Tyler O'Connor came on in relief today after Brian Lewerke was named the starting quarterback by Mark D'Antonio. O'Connor has come in and has been nearly perfect on the day. Four for five, 176 yards and two touchdowns. But most importantly, he's been decisive. There hasn't been any hesitation. When he sees him, he lets it rip. And that's really what he wasn't doing. He was holding it just a little bit more. Jay Scott in the backfield with O'Connor on first down. O'Connor on play action in trouble and Walker with a sack. Second sack of the year for Anthony Walker Jr., who did not bite on the play fake. Yeah, you're going to watch him right up here. And so they just, they're just going to bring five. He comes unblocked. Really, I think this was supposed to be more of a run blitz because they were playing. It looked like a, they dropped a middle safety freight. That's caught by Tristan Jackson down at the 25-yard line, seven-yard pickup. After the sack, so it'll bring up a third down. Jackson, just a freshman. Seen a lot of young faces out there for Michigan State. Yeah. Keep your eye on Adenabo. Snap the ball. Adenabo off the edge. Got to be careful. O'Connor throws to the sideline. Caught. And Felton Davis, the third, takes it all the way to the 40-yard line for the first down. 15-yard pickup, Cairo and McGee there to try to bring down the 6'4 sophomore, Felton Davis. Kevin, that's what I haven't seen out of O'Connor. Now, he threw that ball before he made the break. That was great anticipation. That is what he was really lacking earlier. Down at 10, Holmes trying to 
trying to find the corner, can't get there. Tackle made by Odenabo, and that may be the final play of this third quarter. Only 35 points scored between the two teams in the third quarter. Not too bad. We'll take that. And that will be indeed the final play of this third quarter. 40 to 31. Northwestern with the nine point lead on the road. Critical game for both teams. Clayton Thorson doing his job for Northwestern. Malik McDowell, a sack and a half. RJ Shelton, two huge plays through the air for Michigan State. And Solomon Vault with a 95 yard kickoff return. 40 to 31, Cats. 40 to 31 Northwestern with the lead as we start the fourth quarter. Kevin Kugler, Matt Millen, Lisa Byington with you. Our BTN crew here at East Lansing just in the third quarter alone. 57-yard touchdown catch, 59-yard touchdown catch, 86-yard touchdown catch, and a 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. What will the fourth quarter bring in a nine-point game? O'Connor to the air on first down, and Shelton trying to pull that one in under duress from Jalen Prater, and it'll bring up third and ten. Nice tight coverage. The ball's where it had to be. That's that's a small window. I'm I'm impressed with O'Connor. This, this is the best I've seen him. I watched three games of his on tape. I saw one on television, which doesn't really help me very much. But O'Connor is decisive, and he's getting rid of the ball quickly, not waiting for them to get open. He's pulling a string like they wanted him to. Third down and ten here for Michigan State. Western. All pressure coming. O'Connor able to get away. Looking to throw. Airing it deep. Donnie Corley jumped the ball. It's intercepted. Picked off by Jared McGee at the nine-yard line. Odenimo had the pass rush that forced O'Connor out, and then the pick is thrown at the nine. Actually, that's as good as a punt. O'Connor, he actually has him. Oh, he's, on, he's on the back side. If that ball's thrown deep, he has a chance to get it. Instead, they get a... That's as good as a good punt. And there's an injured player down at the end of the play for Michigan State. David Beadle as Northwestern celebrates the pick. The sixth thrown this year by O'Connor. David Beadle down on the field being tended to by the Michigan State Athletic Training Staff being helped up. At, he started the first four games at tackle on the left side and now being helped off the field after getting injured on that one. You're gonna watch him on the left side. Number 59, he just gets overpowered and then he, oh, he hyperextended his left knee as it looks like it would happen. Then with a power move to the inside, he just took a poor step on that. So starting at the nine yard line now, Northwestern's offense pinned deep, but with the ball in 14.43 to go. The Denebo's played a good game here. He's got good pressure, and they haven't had to rely this Northwestern defense on, on blitzes. Yeah, we've talked a lot about four-man pressure from Northwestern today. They haven't needed to bring too much else. From the nine-yard line, nowhere to go. Malik McDowell again. He's played himself a pretty good game also. It's one-man pressure. Yeah, and he's been coming off the edge, which they haven't had. And so they start to run that slow zone read, and he just comes down the line exceptionally well. Second down and 10 at the nine yard line. Thorson from the end zone, and not much room to roam after the catch for Garrett Dickerson. Monte Nicholson who made the tackle still down. 
boy, that would be a huge loss for Michigan State. Nicholson. He's a good player. He's been the best player they've had in the secondary this year. You talk to their coaching staff, and to a man, they'll say, Monte Nicholson's playing better than anybody in the secondary right now. And he's played well today. He's got good size. He's got next level skills. And he's been very active here today. He's that's that's a good player. 12 tackles today, Matt, for Nicholson. Yeah, he goes to his left shoulder right away. So he goes to. Marlon Barnett, defensive coordinator. Had a great conversation with him yesterday about his defense and about finishing. If we had a nickel for every time he said finish yesterday in our conversation, we'd be at least 30 or 35 cents. Yeah. <laughs> and not only from him, but from the whole staff. They're, they're, they're well aware of where they're at. So here you go. Finish this series right here. Here's a third down. Clayton Thorson's feet become a factor right here. Kari Willis, you saw him on the field. He takes over for Monte Nicholson. Showing pressure to show tight coverage. Looks like three on two on the inside. Early movement. Might be a free play. And Thorson cannot connect with that one. But there was movement up front, and they let it go. That would be enough for a first down if it is against Michigan State. Offside. Defense number 98. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. It was third and five. We'll see if that penalty does indeed get them to the marker. It'll I depend on the shot. Short. Looks like they are by inches. Yards. Yeah. Now they're not going to move the chain. This is short. And so what's happening here, so they, they brought numbers. Now this changes what you do. Now Justin Jackson becomes a, a bigger factor. And the feet of Clayton Forsett. Third down and a half yard after the penalty. Austin Carr in motion. And the play clock was winding down. A flag was thrown, but a timeout may have been called first. And it was. Prior to the snap. Charge timeout Northwestern. They're first. We'll step aside with timeout. that timeout in a nine-point game. Today's Duluth trading hardest working player is Justin Jackson. 26 carries, 117 yards, and a touchdown for the junior running back. He is a terrific player. Patient, great eyes, excellent change of direction. He's just, he's what you want. Third and short. Big play early in the fourth. Thorson gets it to Jackson, and Justin Jackson gets the first down to the 21. You need, you need the tough yard, you could give it to him. You need something to take it for something to break a big play, you could give it to him. You need to throw the ball out in a flat and make a play, he can do that as well. He's a complete back. On first down, Jackson again, and Justin Jackson to the 27. We go to Mike Hall in Chicago, a T-Mobile studio update. Kevin, for all the scoring you had in the third quarter, in Bloomington, there was no scoring at all until the final play of the third. Devine Redding goes 33 yards to make it a two-point game, and Indiana just got an interception. So early in the fourth, they're down two with the ball. Dangerous game for the 10th-ranked Huskers. Thank you, Mike. Up by just two, Bloomington. Jackson turns the corner and gets the first down. Riley Bulla had a chance at him, Copeland had a chance at him, and Jackson just outran the attempt to get the first. Yeah, but they were able to capture the edge. A nice job by the tight end. Look here, we said this at the start, and I'll say it again. Whoever wins the line of scrimmage will win this game. Right now, Northwestern has won the line of scrimmage. Jackson on first down. Jackson. 
Jackson to the corner again, and he gets nine to the 44. Fry and Willis chase him out. That time, Cooper 98 did his job. He defended the edge. He turned it back to the inside. Now your friends have to be able to get there. They weren't able to. Justin Jackson stuck through it before them all. They're just running the clock. They're trusting their offensive line to win for them. And the feet of Justin Jackson. Second down in the run. Here's Jackson again. Nice cutback. Jackson found a crease, and he's inside Michigan State territory to the 47th with a first down. BTN's original series, The Journey's All New on Tuesday night. It's the show that gives you that unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season. The Journey, Big Ten Football 2016 is Tuesday night at 9 Eastern. And you can always catch some exclusive content at BTN to go. They're still staying in that two shell. They're daring him to run. And run they will. And Jackson will get yardage to the 44. A three-yard pickup. Terry Thompson on the stop for Michigan State. Seven carries for 38 yards. Jackson will get a breather on the sideline. Look at that rushing yardage today. It's been all Justin Jackson. He's He's been the show. 55 yards as he gets that breather. Thorson on the option. Keep. That looked a little awkward as he goes down to the 43 yard line. Well, they're going to option off the end man and they're forcing him to make a decision. And so they get him in a in Thorson to slow it down a little bit. That allows Riley Bullock to come from the inside out and set up this third down. So, as well as Northwestern's plate, this is the down that counts. Michigan State's got to be able to get off the field right here. To tighten the coverage here in the street. All coverage looks like they're faking a blitz. Carr is in the slot at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, right here. On third down, pressure coming. Throwing, and what a catch! I guess who? Austin Carr! Thorson was backpedaling enough to get it there well that's just what, what do you say they need a big play cars delivered all season long and they came down again wills was had, had decent coverage not great coverage Moten on the carry kicking forward and gets back to the line of scrimmage and can't get any further. Austin Carr today, 10 catches for 101 yards and a touchdown. Gives him 42 catches on the year for 566 yards, 244 of those on third. He's been a chain mover. He's been absolutely exceptional. Career high in catches for Carr today. On second down, Thorson on the pitch to Bolt. Solomon Bolt. Nice open field tackle by Andrew Dowell. So sit, reset this. So you go ahead and you're down by 11. If you kick a field goal, it's still a two-score game. So a win for Michigan State right here would be to hold them here and have a field goal attempt. 40 to 31 Northwestern with the nine-point lead. But look at this drive. Well, 13th play coming up. Yeah. And so where's Austin Carr? You got to find him and tighten the coverage. Stay on him. He is in the slot at the top of the screen, right there. Now he's switch. switching. See how they're playing off like that? I, I would jump that cover. I wouldn't give him the chance to get hands on him. On third and nine, it'll be Justin Jackson picking his way to the left. And Jackson boosted for the touchdown. Twenty-six yards for Jackson's second rushing touchdown of the day. And Justin Jackson has given Northwestern the 15-point lead before the extra point. Great call by Mick McCall. So, yeah, we have the third down chain mover. But don't forget about Justin Jackson, who's been tearing you up inside. And his patience and his ability to move laterally is what gets him there. Really well done.
that's how he waits for things to develop in front of him. You see that little jump cut there? That's just great instincts, great running ability. It's a huge day for Justin Jackson. 181 yards on 33 carries and two touchdowns. He had 171 two weeks ago against Iowa, and he's done it 10 yards better today. And he's just about five yards away from his career high as Garrett Dickerson, slow to get up, now makes his way to the sideline. Right. Lost in all that. Left tackle, Blake Hans. Connor Mahoney, left guard. Brad North, the center. Tommy Doles, the right guard. Eric Olson. They have played very, very well. They're the ones who have given them all the room to be able to run and to turn off of and cut off of. And they've won the line of scrimmage. Therefore, they win the game. Of course, we've still got eight minutes to see what happens. Extra point by Mitchell is good and makes it a 16-point game as Justin Jackson takes it to the house. A little hop for good measure as he soars in for six. And the Cats up 16. Saw Garrett Dickerson walking off the field earlier. Now walks back down the tunnel to the locker room to be checked out. The junior out of Englewood, New Jersey, and the starting super back. His brother Cameron played here as well. Super back is a very versatile position. Looks like he's getting some energy right there. Justin Jackson's used a lot of it up today. Do you compare their super back, just from a terminology standpoint, to a tight end? Is how it's used yeah, similarly? He's, he's a fullback. He's an H-back. He's a tight end. Just a very versatile guy. R.J. Shelton trying to make a play. He'll bring it from one yard out. And Shelton fighting through one tackle out to the 24-yard line. Let's take a look at our Benjamin Moore game changer, and Justin Jackson has certainly changed this game. Yeah, and he has, and he's done it consistently from the start of the first quarter to the last snap that he took to the house. And it's his running style, which is really very patient and ability to burst, and he has great change of direction. Not the fastest guy, but fast enough. Really played exceptionally well here today, and he's... He has the hands to be able to be an effective pass catcher in that department also. From the 19 on first down, O'Connor off the double fake, open and caught Delton Williams out to the 46-yard line as we check in for an injury update with Lisa Bynes. Several injury updates, Kevin Northwestern telling me Garrett Dickerson, an upper body injury. He's doubtful to return. On the Michigan State side, left guard David Beadle is done with a left knee injury. And during that last Northwestern drive, Monte Nicholson, they were working on his left shoulder, nearly got him back into the play before Justin Jackson was able to score, but you could expect him to see him back in the next series. That's good news for Michigan State. Thanks, Lisa. So Connor is back to the air. He's got Coley open on the sidelines, and Coley out of bounds at the 35 of Northwestern. Here comes Michigan State again behind Tyler O'Connor off the bench today. Still a two-score two game. There's the catch. There's the foot down. It's a good catch all the way through. This time, now it's complicated with the two-point conversions. O'Connor, the toss, Shelton, the toss, and falling down to make the catch is Josiah Price. That may not be how it looked in practice, but it ends up getting down to the 16. But what makes it even better is he has to throw that ball immediately, and Price does a great job of making sure he gets the catch to set up this first and, go, first and 10 for about the... 16-yard line. O'Connor to Corey, who makes the block. Corey sandwiched and driven down at the 9-yard line. Alonzo Mayo finishing him off. Yeah, 28 Mayo showed up there. <laughs> really, really good job. Just stacked them up. They're going with pace here. They're going with pace, and it's been effective. Second down and three. Play action. O'Connor to the end zone. They have to go for two. Well, Dave Warner opened the 
playbook on that one. They didn't want to be so conservative, so they just, just opened it up. And O'Connor responded. Let's see what happens here on this two-point. Ten-point game here. 7-10 to go. Tyler O'Connor, in limited play, has 255 yards passing today. O'Connor on the reverse to Shelton. Shelton, he'll throw it! And he throws incomplete to Josiah Price. Two-score game, you're still in good shape. 7-10 to go in the fourth for Mark D'Antonio Spartans who march it quickly down the field. O'Connor with his third touchdown pass of the day to Corley. And the Spartans hanging around at home. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Tyler O'Connor did not start this game. He did not come in until the second half. He's already tied his career high in touchdown passes, and he is just eight yards shy of tying his career high in yardage thrown. His team, though, down 10. Yeah, but this may be exactly what he needed, kicking the drawers to get him to get him fully engaged. And he's, Kevin, he is just cutting it loose. I haven't seen him do this. This is the first I've seen him all season long be this decisive, and the ball's coming out right when it has to. They're going to try a little pooch onside. There's a flag down, and it'll go out of bounds. So it's going to be Northwestern ball. Flags down with an offsides. Michigan State trying to catch him off guard a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I don't like that particular decision, but... Offside on the kicking team, number 19. Northwestern will add ten, five yards to the end of the kick. First down. Tonight is primetime volleyball action when the Scarlet Knights take on 22nd ranked Purdue. Coverage starting at 8.30 Eastern tonight, presented by Tachikara on BTN and BTN to go. So let's see if Northwestern's offensive line can continue to do the job they've done all game long. Jackson to the corner. And Jackson down at the 40 in the arms of Kari Willis. The early reviews are yes. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Jackson's up to 188 against the Michigan State defense that over the last three games coming in has allowed 180 yards on the ground per game. BYU gashed him for 260 yards rushing. Toss to the edge. That'll be a first down at the 33-yard line as Macon Wilson's second catch of the day moves the chain. That's well done by Clayton Thorson. So he sees the corner blitz. The only coverage that you can have is the safety coming inside out. So it's a just pitch and catch. That's smart. Well done by Pat Fitzgerald's team. And now they'll take their time. Milk the clock. Let those seconds tick away. Michigan State has not allowed 50 points since Nebraska did it in 1995. Nick Saban coached that Michigan State team. Tom Osborne's team would go on to win the national title. On first down, and not much running room there for John Boaton as we go to Mike Hall in Chicago. Another T-Mobile studio update. Kevin, if Nebraska needs a big play, they turn to Tommy Armstrong. On a third and nine, he scrambles Armstrong and finds an open Stanley Morgan with three guys on him. Morgan gets around and goes all the way for the score. Indiana just responded with a divine Redding touchdown, so it's still a two-point game. Wow. Good battle there, second and 12 here as Northwestern with a 47-37 lead. there again for Moten. Brandon Clemens in there on the stop. Take a look at the West standings and now Northwestern's Charged loss in Michigan conference State. was to Nebraska early in the year. Nebraska with the 2-0 record in conference play. Iowa right behind but the West has a lot of possibilities as there's an injured Northwestern Wildcat and it's Eric Olson has gone down. While they tend to him, we'll step aside for the timeout in a 10-point game. It's a 10-point game as Eric Olson makes his way to the sideline. The senior right tackle starting in his 25th game today. 
That's a big loss on that offensive line for however long he's out. An offensive line that's done a very good job, Matt, in controlling the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they, they've won the line of scrimmage. They won the line of scrimmage, and that's the reason that they're in the position they are, having put up 47 points. They've clawed and fought all game long. You go all the way back to the beginning when Matt told us the key to this game was whoever would control the line of scrimmage would win the game. game. Northwestern's up by 10. Sam Coverdale in to right tackle now to take over for Olsen. Here's Moat bouncing off one man. A second, a third, and Moat gets all the way down to the 29-yard line. That's a pretty good six-yard run by John Moat in the fourth. Leaves him well short of the first down. And now a timeout used by Michigan 30 State. 30-second charge, timeout. Michigan State, they're second. And Clemens is down now for the Spartans with 5.09 to go in the fourth. Mark D'Antonio's squad trying to figure out a way to get back in this one. See both of these teams next week on BTN. Northwestern plays Indiana, Michigan State's at Maryland. And then each with a big showdown after that. Northwestern's at Ohio State. And Michigan State takes on Michigan. Northwestern looking for 50 for the first time since November 24th, 2012. And remember, their kicking game has been inconsistent to say the least. Jack Mitchell, if they opted to do so, would have about a 45-yard field goal attempt. He did hit a 49-yarder a year ago. Michigan State with one more timeout. 5.09 to go in the fourth. And a fourth and six here for Northwestern. And on to the field comes the offense on fourth and six. Rule number one. Find Austin Carr. Rule number two, know where Justin Jackson is. And the third option is Clayton Thorson's feet. Play action. Thorson with time. Airing it for Carr for the end zone. Touchdown! Austin Carr does it again. And Northwestern's got 53 points on the board. Did they not hear rule number one? <laughs> Apparently not. Austin Carr, this is a great route now. Look how he gets him off bounce, top side shoulder, now work, work to space. And the ball's thrown extremely well. Cox put himself in a bad position. I shouldn't say that. Austin Carr put Cox in a bad position. And Carr won. He's been doing it all game long, all season long. And that's why he was rule number one. Six play, 47 yard drive. Mitchell's extra point caps it. And for the first time since the opener in 95, Michigan State has had half a hundred hung on him. 54 37, Northwestern. 5.02 to go in the fourth. Good protection again. A lot of time. Thorson puts the ball right where it has to. Now look, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just some schlub, but I'm gonna tell you, Demetrius Cox is a good football player, but you need to put your corner, a good cover corner on Austin Carr. I mean, you have to. He's been shredding you all game long. He's a terrific wide receiver. Eight touchdown catches this year. Now there are guys faster, there are guys quicker. But there's something about a guy, a guy's ability to just get open, and he's got that. He keeps you off balance. He just knows how to do it. And he's, he's really good at it.
Nicholson, the deep man from Michigan State. And Nicholson will take a knee. Touchback out to the 25 with 5.02 to go in the fourth. Next weekend, don't forget a triple header of action on BTN. We'll start it off with these same Northwestern Wildcats matching up against the Indiana Hoosiers at noon Eastern. Then at 3.30, Illinois and Michigan, followed by Michigan State, Maryland at 7.30 Eastern. Coverage will start at noon Eastern next Saturday. BTN, you'll also see them streaming live on BTN to go. Looks like Northwestern's found themselves. They found the right recipe. Also looks like Clayton Thorson's taken a step two weeks in a row now. He's played very, very good football. He's a different guy than we saw a year ago, Kevin. It's not even close. 92 points scored by Northwestern in this game and their last game. You can put your shoes back on now. Not, that was a lot of work. I broke a sweat. Here's Shelton throwing back to Corlin. Corlin down the sideline. Corlin can run. And Corley out of bounds in Northwestern territory. They'll mark him right at midfield where he stepped out. A pickup of 25 and a first down. Michigan State allowing over 50 points for the first time since September 9, 1995 against Nebraska. That Nebraska team would go on to win the national championship. And Northwestern with 54 on the board here today. slide at the 43 yard line seven yard scramble they got to go hurry up they still it's a three score game you can see the points that are allowed the first half second half has been brutal to them they haven't been able to finish and that was the big mantra this week was finish and they weren't able to do that again today second half points allowed they've been outscored in the second half today 35 to 20 Offensively, 37 points is enough to win a game. Yep. Defensively, you didn't get your job done. Fourth down and three for Michigan State. O'Connor. Looking into traffic, and it's deflected away from R.J. Shelton. Incomplete, and Northwestern's defense gets the hold. Kyle Cairo on the coverage. And the Wildcat offense will take over on downs with 4.09 to go. Michigan State, four minutes and nine seconds from dropping their fourth in a row, moving to two and four on the year, and an unbelievable 0 and three in the conference. And they've still got matchups with Michigan and Ohio State on the schedule. They got to get this defense straightened out. From the 43 first down, a little collision in the backfield as Moten loses two to the 41. Raekwon Williams on the stop. Coming up, Rick and the gang will get you caught up on a busy Big Ten Saturday on the State Farm postgame report. Kevin, Michigan State wanted to, wanted to be able to inject some big plays into their... They got that done today. What they didn't get done, they didn't get done the work at the line of scrimmage to establish a run game. Traditionally, that has what's carried them every year, year in and year out. Right now, they are struggling running the football. And a huge special teams play today, Matt, really changed yep. the tenor of this game. Michigan State had come back behind O'Connor. They cut it to two, 33-31.
and then Solomon Vault goes 95 yards. And talk about a gut punch to a Spartan team that was energized. They were bouncing around on the sidelines. They were right back in the game. And since that point, Northwestern's pulled away again. And so you have to go back and credit Pat Fitzgerald's team. And Fitz has done a nice job with this group. He knew it was going to be a dogfight. He's talked about it all week long. He knew it was going to be one in the trenches. He was right. And his guys, they did it. They were able to win that upfront battle and therefore the game. Third and nine. Moten trying to fight through the tackle. And Moten gets it to the 49-yard line. And Michigan State will use their final timeout with 2.31 to go. charge timeout to Michigan State. A 30-second timeout. So Michigan State down 54-37 will use their final timeout. And now the Spartans trying to figure out what to do from here. And that's going to be a question, Matt, that's going to be asked all week long around East Lansing. Is where do you go from here for Michigan State? Well, I and normally what I do is simplify and get back to basics. And I think they tried to do that this past week. But they have to be able to correct that offensive line. And the offensive line didn't get any movement. They didn't open very many holes at all. And they were able to just make some plays in the passing game. But for the most part, until they get that straightened out and get back to what Michigan State football is, just tough physical running football, they're going to struggle. Well, the question's going to be, where do you find those six wins that you need to get to a bowl game? That's the remaining schedule. Assuming this one is a loss, you still need four wins on that schedule. That's not going to be an easy task. It will not be an easy task. It'll be a little easier if they can get that offensive line straight down. And that punt is blocked. That could score. A blocked punt and a scoop down the sideline. And out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Barksdale got the block. And then the scoop down the sideline for Michigan State, taken out of bounds by Jalen Watts Jackson. I don't know why Jalen Watts Jackson stopped to try to cut back on a defensive lineman. That's just that's just not very aware. Watch the block. That's well done. Get his hand in there. And then watch Jackson on the backside. All he's got to do is turn on the Jets, and he's in the house. But he did not do that. He waited, and I think it's I think it's our guy, 97, had the sack early. Big hit. Gaziano. Gaziano is the guy who gets him. It is. Way to go, guys. Went down a little guy. Jalen Watts Jackson certainly has experience in returning punt issues for touchdowns. He's the guy who did it against Michigan a year ago for the win. O'Connor to the sideline, and that's too tall for Corley. And it'll bring up second down. Clock will stop with 2.17 to go. Fifty-four thirty-seven, Northwestern. is caught short by R.J. Shelton at the 24-yard line. Walker with the tackle. Clock will run as we slip under two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter here in East Lansing. They've got to hurry it up. Third down. O'Connor found his tight end and down at the 11 is Jamal Lyles. Clock will stop while they move the chains for the first down. 151 to go. They'll mark it at the 10, so it's first and goal. O'Connor steps for the end zone, and that one's too far. Monty Medeiros, the intended receiver. Second down and goal from the 10. They've been just rushing with four and dropping seven. They really haven't had, they've gotten pressure with four for the majority of the game. <laughs> o 
O'Connor in trouble. He's sacked by Odenabo. Odenabo just didn't quit. Came off the backside. He was blocked. He tried to scramble out of it, but Odenabo kept coming. First official sack. Rather, second sack charge, today for Odenabo. And a Their timeout second. taken by Northwestern. You're going to see Denebo on the top side. And he's working against Keeler, so he works back inside. He just doesn't quit. Part of that is coverage down the field, nowhere to go with the football. And the other part is just perseverance. Odenabo with two sacks today, six sacks in the last two Perfect. games. Northwestern would like that to be a full time. And here's the remainder full of the time. schedule for Northwestern. Indiana next week on BTN, then they're at Ohio State, home for Wisconsin. They finish at Purdue, at Minnesota, and home for Illinois. Do you see four more wins, or rather three more wins in there for Northwestern? Yeah, yeah, you see the three wins in there. And so Ohio State and Wisconsin are the two teams that they're going to, you know, they're going to not be favored in. And then the Minnesota game will be another one of those coin flip games. O'Connor on third and goal at the 25. Madaris trying to get to the edge, and he stays in bounds at the 18-yard line. There's an injured Wildcat now down, and that's Kyle Cairo. So Cairo down on the sidelines after that play. being tended to. It's been an injury-plagued year for Northwestern. They've lost some key cogs this season to injury. Their workhorse, Justin Jackson, has been there, and Clayton Thorson just continuing to get better and yep. better. 281 yards and three more touchdown yeah. passes today. Played a real nice game here today. Offensive line. This offense played well. Austin Carr played well. Justin Jackson played well. Defensively, they were able to get pressure without really having to go to any kind of a blitz. This is a big win for them. This is a big win. They were expecting a dogfight, and they got one, and they, they conquered it. Alabama conquered Tennessee in a big way today, 49-10. to 10. Ohio State's at Wisconsin tonight. Clemson needed overtime to beat NC State. Louisville over Duke last night, and Nebraska leading Indiana by just a pair late in that one in Bloomington. And this week, four Big Ten teams in the top ten for the first time since 1960. Well, Nebraska sneaking into that top 10 this week and in a dog fight against Indiana. When I said it earlier, I think this conference is stronger now than it's been. I think the coaching's better. I think the players are better. And I think you're seeing better conference play as good as there is out there in the country. Northwestern seems to have found their offensive rhythm as conference play has begun. Found it last week against Iowa in the 38-31 win. Now on fourth and goal, here comes Geiger to try the field goal, and the kick from 35 by Geiger is good. Just sneaks in, and that cuts it to a 14-point game. You needed to get 17 in some combination if you're going to make a miracle comeback. But now it all comes down to some sort of an onside kick, a recovery, a quick score, an onside kick, a recovery, and another quick score. That's a very steep hill. That's Mount Everest of comebacks. It was very redundant by you. Yes. Mark D'Antonio. And Pat Fitzgerald. Those guys have been at it a long time. Yeah, and Mark's going to be disappointed with what happened with his team after building a 14-point lead, but Pat is going to be, that's something to really build on. They never quit. They went back to what they're supposed to do. They stuck with the game plan. 
and they worked it, and they played exceptionally well. So now the onside kick try, but first, a timeout will be taken by Northwestern. 30 second charge timeout, Northwestern. Their final timeout. timeout. Fifty six seconds to go in this fourth quarter and a 54 40 lead. And it all comes down to this onside kick. The 94 combined points today is a series record. Previous high was 90 back in 1989. And I don't know Matt that when we walked in the building today, yeah. either of us expected to see a 54 to 40 kind of ball game. No, not at all. I don't I don't believe there are very many people who could have would have predicted that. In fact, if any. So most points Michigan State has ever allowed at Spartan Stadium. And the onside kick goes out of bounds. It did not travel the requisite 10 yards, and it goes out of bounds anyway. Turn out the lights. The party's over. And Northwestern will begin the celebration. A road win in the Big Ten is good no matter where you get it or how you get it. When you get 54 points on the board against Michigan State on their home field. Free kick out of bounds. Five yards will be added to the dead ball spot. First down. First four-game losing streak. Not only as Michigan State head coach, but in his head coaching career. And Mark D'Antonio and the Michigan State coaching staff are going to have some late nights in the next week. A knee will be taken by Clayton Thorson here as Northwestern will run this one out. What a win for the Northwestern Wildcats, Matt. They fell behind in this game 14 to nothing. That seems like an eternity ago. This place was rocking. Michigan State was rolling, had the defensive score on the pick. A 14-0 lead, and then the wheels fell off for Michigan State. That's a, that's a big win on the road. Really something. Two weeks in, well, not two weeks in a row, but the last time out, the last two outings, that's something to build on. That Fitzgerald squad behind Justin Jackson and his stellar performance today. Clayton Thorson with three more touchdown passes. And did we forget, it's third down. Austin Carr. <laughs> Let's go downstairs and check in with Lisa Byington. 38 points two, two games ago, and now 54 tonight. What has changed about your offense in the last two games? Well, I think we're executing. I mean, outside of the uh, pre-snap penalties of jumping off sides. I thought we were pretty clean as far as our execution and credit goes to the young men. I mean, they've been working their butts off to get better and improve and, and uh, you know, really proud of them. And now we got ourselves back to zero and zero. And, you know, we got we got a bunch of football ahead of us, but uh, really proud of our guys' perseverance. I told you that at halftime. Didn't start the way we wanted it. We should have made it really hard without blocking a guy on the punt play, which is mind boggling to me. So a lot, I mean, we're still far from where we need to be. And playing a really good Indiana team next week. So uh, really proud of our guys, really proud of them. You, you alluded to the comeback. You were down 14 nothing in the yeah. first quarter. Yeah. But then when you came back, you didn't relinquish that lead. What enabled that comeback? Well, our guys didn't flinch. You know, we've been through a lot. Our young guys are growing up. They're making mistakes, and they're growing up. And we did some things today that is mind-boggling, but you got to credit Sparty. And, you know, I've got so much respect for Mark, and he is one of the best coaches in our conference and in the country. And we knew we were going to get a great shot early. We didn't answer it very well quickly, but I thought we answered the second round and beyond. And th that team's going to win a lot of football games. I'm just really, really proud of our guys. Now we got to get healthy and find a way to keep it going. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Okay. Lisa, I got Justin right away. Well, that'll do it from Spartan Stadium. Our final score in this one, Northwestern 54, Michigan State 40. Coming up, Rick and the gang will bring you the State Farm post-game report. So for Matt Millen, Lisa Byington, and Mike Pereira, I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long from Michigan State University. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything. So we know how to cover almost anything, even a romantic rodent. A romantic what?
a sucker for proposals. And we covered it April 26, 2014. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Champions are not merely born. They're forged in the crucible that is flag football. With equal parts turf, pigskin, and heart. That's why Buffalo Wild Wings donates to boys and girls clubs across the country to not only help thousands of kids learn about teamwork on and off the field, but to help them fulfill their destiny. To shred defensive lines, terrorize the secondary, and emerge bonded as true champions. the John Deere Gator XUV 590i, a vehicle so versatile it owns anything outdoors that ends in ING, like hauling, exploring, off-roading, and of course, braking. 32 horsepower, a 1,200 pound payload, and over a thousand different ways to configure yours. Go Gator! Get 0% financing for 60 months and $300 off the Gator XUV 590i at a dealer near you. Welcome inside our BTN studio, State Farm Post Game Show on your television for the next 60 minutes. Rick Pizzo, Stan Jackson, Howard Griffith, folks. I am exhausted after watching that Michigan State Northwestern game. <laughs> well, it's amazing to witness these two teams. If you go back to the first two weeks, there is no way you would think these two teams would be in the aisle they are currently. But for Northwestern, I think the difference maker is Clayton Thorson. I mean, he has been outstanding the last two games. And when he plays well, it changes how any defense can attack this offense for Northwestern. It opens lanes for Justin Jackson. And when he's completing balls, they're very good. Austin Carr. I mean, what we really watched tonight was two teams that continue to head in very different directions. Polar opposite, even. Yeah, it, it's it's really been a tough, you know, really month for Michigan State, and they just can't get anything going. They weren't able to run the ball or anything today. Well, Mark D'Antonio tried to find a spark, and he tried to find it in the form of redshirt freshman Brian Lewerke. D'Antonio, very quiet this week, said we'd know who was going to take the first snap when that snap was taken. Meanwhile, Austin Carr, Justin Jackson, two of the bell cows for Northwestern, and Jackson rips off a 29-yard gain here in the first to put Northwestern within seven. Jackson, 34 carries, 188 yards. Northwestern still down by 10. It's Thorson to Austin Carr. Get ready to see that early and often throughout this one. Thorson, 27 of 35, 281 and three touchdowns through the air. And then the work he gets welcomed to the Big Ten in emphatic fashion by Joe Gaziano. Mm, it's the hurt. safety. Northwestern would add a field goal, 19-17 at the break. Start of the third quarter, just four plays in. Thorson to Flynn Nagel. I'd say, Howard, that was a busted coverage. Yeah, it was a busted coverage. And one of the things they've really been struggling with all season in the secondary for Michigan State. 57 yards. Northwestern up 26-17. And then Thorson doing it with his legs. Second game in a row that Thorson has accounted for four touchdowns. It's 33-17. Tyler O'Connor, your turn once again. And how about O'Connor in relief off the bench? Goes for 281 and three scores. This one fortuitous to R.J. Shelton, 59 yards. Shelton, by the way, had 190 yards receiving and two touchdowns. And if you think 59 yards is good, <laughs> I give you 86. Stan, that is a beauty of a throw. It's an unbelievable throw. Play action pass up over the pocket and let it go. And R.J. threw the rest. Spartans are within two. On the ensuing kickoff, you simply have to hold the momentum. Mm. Play some defense. Yes. Make sure that after the funny bounce, Solomon mm -hmm. Ball doesn't find himself. Oh, coverage. no. Where's the coverage team? Didn't. Stay in your lanes. 95 yards. Fourth kickoff return for a touchdown of Ball's career. And the Wildcats right back on top by more than a score. It's 40-31. 
And then on third and nine, and this was an issue for Michigan State all game long, unable to get off the field on third and fourth downs. Northwestern, 11 of 20 on such conversions. And on fourth and six to cap it off. Seriously. Thorson, Carr, you know it's going there and you still can't You know stop the it. ball is going there, don't you? Howard, I just said that. And they still couldn't stop it. Uh. 54 to 40, the 54 points most allowed by Michigan State ever in East Lansing. And how about Northwestern? This is a team that scored seven points, seven, <laughs> seven? against Illinois State in the uh -huh. second game of the year. Yep. In their last two games against Iowa and Michigan State, two teams that have had two of the best defenses in this conference over the past half decade, they've scored 92. Ooh. A big reason why Justin Jackson, who is standing by with Lisa Byington. Justin Jackson, over 30 points in your last game and over 50 points in this game. What is difference? What is different about this offense? Uh, we got confidence. Guys are making plays when it counts. And, uh, yeah, we're just going out there playing together. And like I said, like those third downs, those critical plays, we're getting them. And that happened in the first half and the second half, and that's why we were able to put up some points today. How much instinct do you use in your running? I mean, you use your keys, you know, the things you're coached to do. But once you're out there, things are going 100 miles per hour. You just... Most of it's instinct. Um, you fall back on your fundamentals and just go out there and play. And I think when you're thinking, you're not as good of a player. You know, when you just go out there and you're playing, you're much better. So that's what I try and do. You know your quarterback, Clayton Thorson, awfully well. Your roommates yeah. with him. You work with him yeah. so much. What's been different about him in the last two games? He's great to see. I mean, he's so confident, not only in himself, but in the guys around him. You know, in the wideouts, us protecting him, you know, keeping him standing up and not getting hit. So. You know, that's the type of quarterback he is. You know, he goes out there and he fights every single down, every single play, and he's got so much talent. And you guys are just seeing this now, but we saw this all summer, him working, him working the offseason, getting mentally ready and physically ready and, you know, paying dividends now for us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Five and a half yards per carry is pretty good. When you do it over the course of 34 carries, it becomes really good. And we can talk all we want about Thorson and Carr. Stan, we'll get to that in a second. But Justin Jackson established what this offense could do early on. Yeah, and the patience that he runs the football with, allowing the offensive line up front to make decisions, then he explodes his eyes into the open seam to really make guys miss as well. He is the total package. And look, this third and three, he gets a chance to make a guy miss in the hole. I mean, that's a one-on-one. -on -one. He, he can't make the tackle, takes it in for a touchdown. Third and one, give it to him again. Whoop. They're missing in the hole. Continues to pick things up, third and nine. It's worked so well, we'll just keep going, and, and he hits the big one. He is such a dynamic player to me, and, and he's fascinating, too, because you watch him, he doesn't look like he has great speed, but he makes guys miss in the hole, and nobody seems to get a solid shot uh, tackle on him. And he puts up huge numbers, 188 yards a day, two touchdowns. Tremendous day. Well, you know, like any great bo boxer, they have more than one punch. So if that was the hook, let me talk about the cross. And Clayton Thorson, the last two weeks, has been sensational. Austin Carr is a big part of that, 130 yards receiving. But it has to start with the quarterback making great throws and good reads. So second down and nine, you're going to see Clayton roll to his left. He's very patient. Even with pressure in his face, he delivers a very accurate throw. How about this third down and five in the red area? Another accurate throw to his guy for a touchdown. They were fantastic on third and fourth down today. Another third down throw. Very accurate. If that ball's behind, that's a pick. Fourth and six. You see just oh. boys in the pocket. Drops a dime right here. Only one person can catch it. If Clayton continues to play at a high level, this is a completely different offense. We know Justin Jackson can be very effective. But now the defense has to play him di differently. He was outstanding today. This is a Northwestern team we left for dead after they lost to Western Michigan and Illinois State. Now they've come back with these wins over Iowa, over Michigan State, should we start considering Northwestern differently? Because a few weeks ago when they beat Iowa, we said, okay, now if they get to six and back to the postseason, it's been a really good year. Well, listen, those pre-conference losses doesn't take them out of the fight to win the West. And right now, they're playing as good as anybody. They've got balance on offense and defense, and you've got to take them seriously. There's a couple of reasons we left them for dead. At least I did. They couldn't run the football. They really weren't playing really good run defense either. So two of those things that they now all of a sudden have turned around and are playing well. And Afadi Adenabo, six sacks in the last two games. He's the type of player that we expected to see a couple of years ago. I believe he's a five-star, high four-star, five-star player. And now he is really delivering. 
And while they allowed a ton of yardage through the air, only gave up 51 rushing yards to Michigan State in this game, made the Spartans one-dimensional. As for Michigan State, Howard, I think it's pretty clear that when D'Antonio went back to Tyler O'Connor and he had a big second half, yeah. he's probably going to be the guy next time out. The bigger question is defense because right now this team cannot stop anybody. Can't get off the football field. When you think about it, that, that's a major problem. They, Northwestern was 10 of 19 on third downs. You got to be able to get off the football field. And it was the same recurring theme. There's been a theme lately, particularly with uh, Michigan State in the second half of games. They can't slow anybody down. You look in the secondary, guys are running scot-free. And listen, I, I know that Austin Carr is an unbelievable talent. It's a reason he's leading the Big Ten in receiving. Call 11 passes today. But you know he's going to be the guy. Why can't they devise some sort of scheme? Let me, let me back up. I know they devised some sort of scheme. Why, can't, why is it not being executed on the field? Well, there's several problems for Michigan State. You mentioned it on the defensive side, but even on the offense, this dam has a lot of holes, not enough fingers, I think, to put it in all the holes right now. When your quarterback leads you in rushing and he doesn't play the whole game, that's a problem. So this offensive line has to figure out a way to play better. The recipe for success for Michigan State has always been great defense, run the ball effectively, and have a quarterback to manage the game. And then on top of that, when you have a special teams letdown, Ooh. when you have all the momentum, that's something that Coach D'Antonio has always taken pride in. So there's a lot of things going wrong for this football team right now. You have to get back to the drawing board. Still some tough games ahead of you. Ohio State, Michigan, you got to figure it out or it can get a lot uglier from here. And the Big Ten West is yelling at everybody out there, don't sleep on us, don't yeah. hate on us. This was the third game chronologically to finish on Saturday that was a crossover game. Uh -huh. And at this point, the West... 3 and 0. Show them some when love. we continue on the State Farm post game show, the West trying to go to 4 and 0 with the team that was favored on the road as Nebraska looks to back up its top 10 ranking against Indiana. Comes down to the final minutes and we'll show you the finish next on the Football Post Game show presented by State Farm.